husband. Hey guys, this is Steve with Orlando Collector Deviants along with Graven. Hey guys, how you doing? And special guest tonight. Hey, how's everybody doing? Promoter of Daytona Beach Comic Book Convention and the Land Toy or Comics and Collectible Show. Did yeah. I always screw it up. That's all right. Steve's getting started tonight, guys. Steve's oh, no. early. I, I, I can never pronounce it. I, everybody has a different name for their shows, and I just all call oh, no, them. I get it's the, or, his is the Tona Toy Comic Con. That's all okay. I mean. All right. <laughs> Well, but, exactly. but, like, there are comics and there are toys there. Speak of the devil. Hey, look, Trish showed up. Hey, Trish, how's it going? Hey, Trish, how's it going? <laughs> hey, Monica, nice to see you joining us tonight. Hi. <laughs> okay, so what we always do at the beginning is we let Graven go um, tell us about horror show, freak show, horror Yeah, fest. yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Now, guys, this uh, coming week, uh, Friday through Sunday, it's the Freak Show Horror Film Festival. It's happening at Epic Theaters at Lee Vista here in Orlando, Florida. We get the show started Friday night. We have a special uh, party at Marlowe Tavern uh, that starts out 7 o'clock, 7.30 time frame. And then afterwards, you can join us at 9.30 for our opening movie night where we're showing Redcon 1. Um, tickets are actually on sale right now at Epic Theater as well as at the website. You can go to www.freakshowfilmfest.com and get to know all about it. Hey, Xander. <laughs> hey Xander, how are you? Hey Xander. Um, we have uh, some special tickets available. We have this year we actually have uh, one day passes for Saturday and Sunday. And we have a weekend pass as well and single block tickets where you can watch a view. Basically, what we're showing is feature films, shorts, super shorts, and student films. So come on out, guys. It's all independent international horror. All right. The cool. link is down below. And the link, you know, Trish put already put it on there for you guys. Yep. And uh, since, uh, ooh, let's go down here. Hey, Michael, how you doing tonight? Hi, Mike. Um, you're going to have a red carpet event at 9 o'clock. We do, red carpet event at 9 o'clock on Friday, absolutely. We're actually, the movie we're showing that night is going to be Red Con 1. That's the main feature. We'll also have a short associated with it. Um, that's all detailed in our schedule online uh, on the website itself. And funny enough, Red Con 1 is actually, uh, one of the producers is Kevin Eastman. Which I think is really cool. He's uh, been promoting the show as well, as far as that video and film being there. No, no, I know a lot of uh, the producers and directors are all yep. going to show up. Absolutely. Any chance? Oh, it's. I mean, we don't know for sure. Anything's possible. You know, people fly in from all over the world to come to the show, so it's nice. We do get surprises from time to time. Actors, directors, you know, you name it. Actresses, producers, film crew, all come out. So you never know. And where did you say this was going to be again? It's going to be at Epic Theaters. It's right here next to the Air National Airport off of 436 right there. It's at Lee Vista. Okay. Now, have you ever been to Epic Theaters? I have not. Oh, you should try. Right. They have reclining, like, Seats yeah, and everything cool. in there. They have a bar in there. Yeah. You know, everything. Yeah. It's what have a few drinks, go watch the movies. Hey Josh, how you guys doing? Yeah, well. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Gary says what's he says up, Tom. Hey, hey, what's up, Gary? Hey Josh, <laughs> how are you? Jennifer. Hello, Thank Jennifer. You. There you go. Uh, his hat or my hat? I think it's <laughs> that hat. That has more hat more has more personality. <laughs> That's definitely uh, Oh. Oh, oh Jennifer. Hey, how's it going? You know, uh -huh. Her drink of choice is Blue Moon, which yes, is a very good drink choice. Never had it before. Um, is it good the, the Blue Moon, Moon Beer? Yeah, okay. Blue Moon Beer. Okay. If you ever go to Red Robins, and yes, I, I'm, I'm throwing it out, they have a Blue Moon Milkshake. Oh, my God. Interesting. It tastes like an orange sickle. Gotcha. Where's Tom's hat? Trina says. Where's Tom's hat? I got a halo tonight. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to behave myself. Hey, Raymond, welcome. Good, Josh. We're doing good. How are you doing tonight? I think he's doing good, he said. Yeah. We're doing all right. We're going to have John. Fun. Josh will actually be in Daytona yeah. next weekend. Yeah, absolutely. So looking forward to that. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe yeah. since you're here, she'll stay the whole night. Well, maybe. There you usually go. she's in and out. Yeah, well, she, she's busy. She's got other things she's always doing, so she wants to keep up on things. She's laughing at you. <laughs> <laughs> uh so, okay, so I, I, I was going to say something. Speaking of horror show, freak show horror fest. Can, yeah, it's all right, buddy. Right? It's all right. It's, it's not for the drinking. It's a hard one to say. Yeah, okay. appreciate it. It's come to us. They're freak show film fest. Freak and show Daytona Beach Comic Con. Oh, absolutely. See, because we got invited to the red carpet event. 
cool. Excellent. And I'm thinking if anybody shows up uh, that's watched this video mm -hmm. to us while we're at the red carpet event, I think there's a gold ticket in the future. That would be a cool That'd thing to give away. So you want to explain really cool. the gold ticket? Yeah. Do you guys have one here so we can show it to them real uh, quick? Of course we do. Oh. Okay. So what we have here is a golden ticket. And with this golden ticket, it allows you to get into uh, Daytona in November 4th in two weeks. Well, actually in a week. Um, and for free, you can get into the land show January 13th for free. And then April 27th and 28th, Daytona Beach two-day show gets you in free for both days. Along with that, you can come to the Tallahassee show, which we're having uh, November 10th. I have to remember the date. Um, and that will get you in free as well. So that's four shows that you can get into with this free golden ticket. There's only 50 of these made. So if you're fortunate enough to get one, you've got free passes for four different shows. It's awesome. It's a very awesome idea that you come up with. Um, I know we've given a couple away at yeah, a quarter absolutely. throwdown. Yeah, yeah, for it's sure. It's been a big hit at quarter has, throwdown. It has, it has cool. been, yeah. No, we, we've given a few away online, so. Graven, Steve, and Tom. What's up, John? Yeah. How yep. are you, buddy? And Josh says, yep, yep. Bring, he, bring about being to of, Daytona, he's yeah. bringing a bunch of paintings with him. Very cool, very cool. We actually have one of his paintings up on the wall. My wife was quite happy that to see that, and she put it up there. Very cool. Um, we have one of Monica's. Yeah, one of very, very very out. Yeah. yeah. So you have uh, original art. I have a lot of it. I just don't have a lot of places to put it. He's um, a connoisseur, if you will. Yeah. Well, once I get rid of a lot of comics, I don't have more wall <laughs> space. <laughs> Trina says, "Yay for golden tickets! You need to have Willy Wonka hat, Tom." It's true. <laughs> it's true. I think next we talked time, about that time. last show, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I'm a Loompa Loompa, not a, not a Willy Wonka. Yeah, yeah John was a Willy Wonka. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I always do road versus. That'd be kind of funny. It's all Loompa. <laughs> so, so, hey, Marty, how's it going? Haven't seen you in a long time. <coughs> Marty's one of my friends from back in Colorado. Oh, okay, gotcha. All right. Oh, well, hey, welcome, Marty. Marty. Nice to see you. Nice to talk to you. Thanks for joining in. Um, so that that's what's going on. Mm -hmm. If you guys don't know, Tom is my history teacher with comics. Occasionally. Oh, no. Occasionally. <laughs> As long as you're not busy. And and here's the thing, always at the cons, he's always busy. I mean, he, he has people coming to, because he's also pop culture playground when he's at the cons. Yes. That's not his. I forgot to tag that up in the top. Yeah, no, and when we're at, the, like Daytona, then my partner Jake will be running the table. Mm -hmm. um, so we have plenty of comics, magazines. Uh, art, uh, toys, vintage toys, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. Whereabouts in Colorado, Steve? My daughter used to live in Steamboat Springs and moved to Savannah. Well, what? I'm, I'm from Melican, and then we moved up to, you were in Parachute when I met parachute, you. Yeah. And then I moved up to Parachute, yeah. and we moved. Airshoot, Colorado. Colorado. Wow. Right on the side of the highway. On the yeah, side they of the just drop you off and say good luck. <laughs> it's so cute. Really right. That's what that town was like. <laughs> they come up with some names. Okay. Hey, Let's Marco. See. John says Tom is the most supportive man in the comics today, and he is. He I would agree. Well, I don't know about today, but I'm trying to, trying to at least help everybody out. Um, so I see Marco's on there. Yeah, Marco's on yeah. there. Hey, Marco. Tom. Marco has, uh, in case nobody knows, Marco owns Gotham City um, Pizza. Pizza. Oh, okay. Um, so that's Norman Beach, and he is also one of the owners of Gotham Gotham's Finest Comics, which oh, is also okay. which, which is I haven't been to this pizza. Pizza. Just, just, just opened up okay. not too long ago. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So if you guys are up there in the area, um, great comic store to go check out. Um, go over to this place for lunch. Um, he will also be at the show in Daytona, set up. Oh, excellent. Okay. So um, they've got some cool stuff there. Um, and if you're in the Norman area, you can also go into uh, Cloak and Dagger. Cloak and Dagger. Hmm. Which um, we always, yeah. whenever we come up for the weekend, we always make sure that we uh, hit Cloak and Dagger. Yeah. Now we'll have to hit Gotham also. Hey, Jonathan. Um, Trina's replying to John. Tom tries to be and to be helpful to anyone who calls and or asks. Oh, unless you advice. ask. Thank you, honey. Unless you ask him to be on video. We had to drug him, yeah. tie him up, and bring it him. It was a big feat before it the video. It was the promise it was of success. Coronas. <laughs> Coronas got me here. And, and Marco says thanks. Nick, hey, guys. 
Steve, there is something on your head. I, I, it jumped from him. I, <laughs> I have this big headache and I can't figure out. Hey, Jay, as well. I saw you pop in there, man. It's good to see you on, buddy. Give the girls my best. Josh wants to try that Gotham City pizza. And we're tagging everybody as we go. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Jonathan uh, talked up here before he even said he's That's funny. Me. That's funny. <laughs> so I haven't been to Gotham City Pizza. Pretty good? Yeah. And, and the cool thing is when you go in, um, well, when you first pull up, you're kind of like, well, it's just a comic store. Oh, okay. You see all these superhero posters out there. Gotcha. Gotcha. And then when you walk in, um, you know it's a pizza place because it just yeah, smells are there. Yeah. He's got pizza sitting right there so you can look at different pizzas. That's awesome. Um, the menus, are, though, are cool because – it's all hero related stuff. Gotcha. You can get a Joker pizza, you can get a Harley Quinn this, That's you can cool. get this and that. Well, sorry about that, that Marco. It's really good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Fix it. She okay. said she fixed it. Gotham's finest. Gotham's finest. Gotcha. Yeah, good, good. She had put up there Gotham City Comics and Collectibles. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. Gotham's well, finest. I guess I tagged somebody that. <laughs> that happens all the time. We were going through tagging something one night and she tagged somebody in where? Malaysia. Malaysia. For a convention in Malaysia. Oh, very nice. They, they said thank you, but it don't use yeah. us. <laughs> But yeah, no, got Gotham Gotham Pizza is um is, is really good. Okay. Um they got a lot of cool stuff there. Mm -hmm. Um it's got a lot of items set up on the wall that you can either look at or just oh. admire or actually buy. Oh that's cool. Um and they do a lot of events for kids and stuff. That's awesome. Um, I always cool. thought we needed that. I always thought we needed more restaurants that were themed that way. Yeah, I mean the you know, you got like hard rock and that and it's it's more themed for adulty stuff. Of course. But when you go to go to Gotham City Pizza, I mean it's it's there and it's it's available for everybody. That's cool. And um, they they do special parties on Sunday when they're closed so that you can get the whole place. That's awesome. Um, and I, I gotta say, uh, not that I'm online or anything, but truthfully, Marco does try very hard to get Come the whole community in. yeah. involved. Cool. Uh, very cool. Have had just yeah, you know, so, so. He yep. even named the pizza after Cloak and Dagger, didn't he? I believe so. I'm not I, sure. I, I believe he did. Yeah, but they, gotcha. they've done some work together. Very well, him and Cloak and Dagger. And stuff. There is one thing I have to say that that I remember about Marco and his pizza place when the hurricane hit last year, and nobody had electricity mm -hmm. or anything like that. They were out delivering pizzas yes, for they were. Yes. Oh, Wow. So yeah. that stuck they, with me. That's something yeah, I remember. Oh, yeah. oh, no. They, they did go out in the yeah. area and um, wow, and they were cooking and they had no AC at their place. And they cooked and they made pizza and they went out and they. When the food pizza. is the heart of everything, yeah. right? Yeah. But That's but they cool. said my address was just a little out of the <laughs> <laughs> I, I could imagine delivered to Orlando. Too busy dealing with Sharknado over there. <laughs> yeah, well, There's he, he sees that a shark landed on your head. <laughs> but yeah, no, if you get a chance, I, I highly recommend they stop yeah, and cool. at least check it out. I'll take a look at it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he looks so stupid when he does that. He looks like a muppet. He looks like he's got a muppet on his head. Hey, America, how's it going? America, how are you? America, how are you? <laughs> well, anyway, if you're up in the Ormond Beach, Daytona area, there's other things you can check out, too. Um, <laughs> we're going to do ads. That is okay. exactly <laughs> what I'm wearing. I'm wearing a shark. <laughs> um, there's World Comics in South Daytona, okay. um, and, and their they, their comic store's been around for since the '80s. Oh wow! Okay. Um, so he has a lot of back stock there. Um, we briefly touched on Cloak and Dagger. Right. Um, they're another comic store that that's in Norman area. They do um, comics. They do pops. They do gaming. Okay. So they're there. And right um, next to them is Blue Dragon Video Games. Yes, Blue Dragon Video Games. Okay. Yes. <laughs> 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 she tagged so. But see, I, You're gonna be busy tagging the night. Seriously, <laughs> oh, we're gonna do advertising we're, we're for everybody. Good. But no, I I love that's one of the reasons I always go stop because I get cloak and dagger first. Okay. Go in there, check out what they got. Mm -hmm. They usually have something that I've ordered holding for me. Gotcha. And then we go over to Blue Dragon, check out all the cool video game stuff and everything like that. I haven't had a chance. I mean, we we do a lot of shows all the time, and we're busy most of the weekend, so it's hard for us to kind of get we're away. But, World uh, Comics is in South Daytona. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I want to try. I want to try to get up to the Daytona area and just be able to check out all the sh sh uh, shops. We haven't had a chance to do that. Um, what might interest you and, and Monica too is um, there's a new place that just opened up, um, Barker Animation. Okay. Um, with the lady that runs it, um, um, Adrian. I met her the other day. Okay. Stopped in. They just just opened up. Um, tomorrow they're they're actually having a Disney artist come in. Okay. Gotcha. Um, and they are located at the uh, at the outlet mall. All right. 
that's on uh um it's right off at ltg in 95 okay and they're, they're located in there and tony uh, hi happy uh, birthday they'll have a, a big disney artist in there doing artwork oh, and right. then they have all kinds of art up on the wall well that's cool um that art and, art? and do stuff yeah art um, animation, art and animation. <clears throat> um they have an art gallery and collectibles <clears throat> that's cool um we need more of that we don't have that very often no, um shit, they have um from pop and her they have uh, at least five different locations out mm-hmm. right now and um they just do a lot of nice, really cool collectible stuff that they have for sale. That um, darn handsome Tom, Tony. Oh, tell him thank you and happy birthday. Happy birthday, Tony. Happy you birthday, know. Tony. Um, so. Hey, Tia. How's it going? This is my niece. Okay. Hey, oh, Tia. Hey. Thanks, thanks for joining. Oh, I want to try to get my artwork at that place. It looks amazing. Let's see. See, How long have you I, I, I saw you post it about it today. So oh, cool. I haven't had a chance to I don't to know if you guys can zoom in on that or not. But uh, no. that's that's Barker. Yeah. I'll let you take care of that. <laughs> Back up a little bit. There you go. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Tilted. Yeah. Oh, wait, oh. <laughs> but Adrian, who runs the place, super nice lady. Um I think she's met Marco. Um, so hopefully that whole community will work together. Now they've been doing like, they're looking at, they said they have five of these? Um, five? they have five different locations gotcha. from what she told me. Gotcha. Um, but this one, this one that they just opened up that she's running. Gotcha. Um, because I've heard something similar years ago about a, a, a group of people, an individual that were trying to do something similar. I don't know if she I don't did know one in South Florida or not. Okay. I, I can't remember. Gotcha. Like gotcha. I said, when I was in talking to her briefly, we were just talking about that place. That's good. And um, we'll definitely so, so it's interesting. And like I said, she's going to have a, a Disney artist there. Um, right. And we will actually have a, a, an artist that works for Disney um, at the Daytona show. Oh, okay. So Excellent. all that information is on our webpage. That's very cool, man. Um, yeah, so... You know, and we're, we're fortunate that we have so many stores that help us take our flyers. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, you so need that. It helps spread yeah. the information to the community. Yeah. And you guys are helping each other. That's important. Yeah, no, it's now, now, if, if you guys don't follow Tom, Tom puts out like a million shares a day, helping out the other, <laughs> help, helping out the other conventions and Store, establishment stores, yeah, everything. everything. I mean, and Tom, he goes, he has gone to, I say, more comic book stores than me and Trish. And that's hard to say. Yeah, I've done a lot of travel. <laughs> yeah. But in the state of Florida, Tom, Tom travels more than me and Trish do on free comic book day. Yeah. And everybody knows we get every comic book store. You guys did hit quite a few comic book stores. You do indeed. So. Um, yeah, well, like your local store, Thanks my Flowers. Yep. Living Dead Comics. Living Dead Comics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, big big, 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 big supporter. I, know, I, was, I was getting bored there for a second. Big yeah. supporter. Um, Lee and his dad love you. And yeah. mom. And mom, I, I, yeah. I yeah. Um, no. no, they're 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 a great store. Um, anybody that comes to Orlando that's looking for back issues, um, I highly suggest that you stop in Living Dead Comics. I, um, yeah, I thought it was yeah, interesting because yeah. I've been there before, and when you walk in, it feels like that old nostalgic. Yeah, yeah especially in that, that front area yeah. where you come in. And you just, I mean, you're, you're, you just stop and you have to look. Mm-hmm. You've got to look from floor to ceiling. You got to look at the in the cabinet. You got to look up on the shelves. He's everywhere. got books everywhere. He's got treasures everywhere. Yes. Yeah. And then what's nice is I can walk in there and I know I'm going to find some indie books I haven't seen somewhere yeah. else. He's going to have some indie books that are might not be in circulation right now, but they're still very much fresh right. uh, for people to see. Uh, I'm an indie guy, so I like seeing. I like, of course, I like my main hitters: you know, Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, Image, all those things. But it's just nice to go there. Because a lot of the other shops you go to, like you can't really always get that. They have a good mix to some degree, but it's like so much in yeah, there. No, so no, I, thought, he, I was impressed. No, he has a lot, and, and him and his dad travel all over the place, Trish. and they're always buying, um, always buying stuff, gotcha. always getting new inventory. Yep. And, and half that stuff you see there when you walk in, yeah, that's his stuff. He oh really? To get. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. A lot of that is his collection, which he loves just to. Yeah, but if you bring show. in a better book. He oh. will trade or sell. Oh, yeah. He, oh, okay. I, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I've... Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, but he's got some great stuff in there, so that's a good store to check out. They also yeah. do gaming in there. Yep, Magic. Um, he's yep. very big with the Magic. Yeah, so... Um, that, that, again, that's another cool store. Um, another nice store here in Orlando would be... Um, would be... Uh, oh, you got no yeah, Would be um, Epic Comics. Epic Comics, but and he's moving to a bigger store. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's moving to a bigger store. Oh, Still in the same oh. area. But bigger store. It's okay. going to be over by um, 
on the, the theater side? No, it's, no, it's no. Be, Epic Comics is over in Waterford Lake. No, I know, but is it going to be in a theater near the theater? No, it's no. right. It's between the cool stuff now. games and yeah. the other store. It's going to be right in oh, there. Oh, it's going to be sandwiched in there. Yeah. I believe so, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So Epic is moving. Good for them. Yep, getting bigger. I haven't had a chance to go in there very much myself either. Well, see, it's nice because Trish hits that one a lot without me because it's right down from our work. Gotcha. You know, Elf's got a nice little store in there. Okay. Um, they do a lot of a lot of newer stuff. Um, a lot of statues. Okay. A lot of cool statues and okay. stuff. And um, and when we take pictures of them, they always give us a, the coolest poses. That's cool. They 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 will sit there. Oh, you guys are here. Give us a few hours, and they come up with the best poses. Nice. That's very cool. cool. Yeah, it's fun. Very cool. Hey, John Neville. John. Hey, John, John. How are you? Very cool. Appreciate everybody viewing and joining in. Hello, Vanessa. Vanessa. How are you? Mr. Tom. Yeah, me and Graven don't matter. It's Mr. Tom. No, no. It's Tom. 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 Drinking with Steve, sipping with Graven, and having a beer with Tom. Hey, he's actually on the second beer tonight. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm not much of a, you know. Keep rougher with you guys, but I'll give it a shot. See where it goes. That's good. Trina's laughing. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so what? Is there anything special going on with the show this year? Any, anything new? Any new twist? New. Um, this year, well, at this show, what we're doing is we're letting the independent artists, writers, and creators take over our panel. Oh, okay. So Rob Anderson, um, he's the advocate for indie people, mm -hmm. and he goes out. He's at a lot of shows, mm -hmm. and he's always out there pushing other indie creators mm -hmm. and their books and their ideas and everything. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to have a voice for all of them. So anyway, we've given him the whole panel room, okay. and he's invited about six or seven different indie artists over, and they're going to take over that whole room. They're going to do three different panels. Okay. Um, they're listed on the website. The main one to, to think about going to though would be the second one. Which they're going to do with comics in the classroom. Okay. Um, but another one, if I can remember correctly, was something to do about publishing your own books. Okay. Yeah, that's and one you had out. you had last time, and I missed that yes. one. I was so upset because yes. I missed so, that. So, so this time, make the time, go over, sit down. They're going to have Q and A all day long. All right. Um, so the guys will be over there. So if there's a panel going on. There'll be artists out in the hall. Oh, cool. And okay. so it's a separate room. It's in the, the building behind our main building. Okay. Um, so we'll have signs that the point to the right way. Yep, and uh, we hope a lot of people turn out and just go to check that out. Cool. Because this is a great opportunity for indie artists to have a voice okay. and talk, and then these creators can get together and they can also discuss how they want to change right. what they're doing of and maybe bounce ideas off each other. Mm -hmm. So um, that that'll be a great opportunity. You're a little um, behind. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think it's good. I think it's important to have the panels. I think it's important to focus on the indie creators as well. Kind yeah. of help come through. That's nice that you're doing that. It, it's good to have the indie people because a lot of the people that are now in mainstream have to start somewhere. Correct. Correct. And, and many of them started as fans back in the 60s and Absolutely. 70s. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. Um, some of them sent in letters and they sent in pictures mm -hmm. and they got published in the back of a comic or a magazine. Right, in that and, moment. Yeah, and in that moment, and then somebody saw it later on and went, Hey, look! This is this guy's first work, right? Right. And it was then from there, it, it it just they bloomed and got into the business. Yes. Yeah. So these guys that are in the indie business, they're starting off slow. They're putting out their own book. They have their own idea. They're creating their own thing, but they need people to support. Them. They do. And there's do. Kickstarter. There's all these other things that people are trying different, mm -hmm. but it doesn't always work. No, it's true. And, and there's it's hard. There's a lot of stuff out there. Yeah. And if stores don't carry it. It's hard to get notes. That's the one thing I would say most. I know there's a few show, uh, stores out there that are actually starting to carry a lot of the local indies. Yes. And they're starting to kind of help push that movement a little bit. I think that's a good idea. But I think it's also important for the creators, those indie creators, to have a voice but also help push their stuff too. They need to get out there. Yeah. They, need to, they need to have something where they can get out there and say, hey, look, we're showcasing our right. thing. Yeah. This is what we got going on. So we're not a humongous show, but we're a show that wants to give them a voice and give them a chance to get yeah, out there. Yeah, it's tremendous. Um, so, yeah, with them, it, it, it's going to give them all a big chance to get out there and talk about their books and what they want to do That's awesome. and, and give regular people a chance to come in and ask questions. And maybe some young man wants to come in there or a young woman mm -hmm. and say, hey, I want to draw a comic. What do I need to do? Yeah. These guys and women that, that are going to be there yeah. that are involved in making comics right now and involved in putting – 
their books out right. that travel around and are putting in miles and sleeping in their cars to do shows. Even they'll be able know, to say, look, yeah. this is what we did. It took me three years to get this one book out. Yeah. Or somebody else can say, hey, look, this is what I did in one week. Right. You don't know until you find out what everybody yeah, everyone's did. Everyone's situation is yes. different. Yeah. And you can learn something no matter what type of situation yeah. it is. And it doesn't matter what kind of hat you wear. No. <laughs> so everybody's invited to the show, okay? Well, I, I was going to say an, another place um, that really takes in the indie creators mm -hmm. is Infinite Mushroom in Titusville. Yes. If, you, if you go into his spot he has a section just for the local really in the yeah. another yeah, show that's... unfortunately i haven't had a chance to go to no, the, shop. the shop, shop. Oh, the shop. shop. Yeah. yeah yeah i just feel that that's yeah. right over there okay and he has a really nice store um they they really push the indie stuff okay um yeah. and his previous location yeah. they used to do a little indie thing every year yeah. okay um, um so he, he still is going to try to get back into that. He now is on in downtown Titusville. Okay. He has a nice little spot. It's just getting into the thing. And what I was going to say back here, because we, we missed a lot. Yes, yeah, certainly. Jonathan, what happened to Tom being at Willy Wonka? <laughs> Oompa Loompa. It was Oompa Loompa. And Oompa -loompa. Missed it. That was like 10 minutes before you even came on. We were discussing that. Um, Eric says we have a celebrity, Absolutely. Mr. Tom. No, Mr. Sharknado. <laughs> and that's one day show in Florida from John. Well, thank you, John. And then Eric's sitting there. I think John is going to spit out that dinner. <laughs> that, that's good. I don't have to come through with a chainsaw. Okay. Who do we have joining us? Aloy? Is that Aloy Sosa? Aloy Sosa, one of my friends. Oh, okay. Right? All right. Cool. Cool. Um, he, he, his daughters are into this scene. Okay. And I don't know if he's still on here. Eloy. Think you're up in North Carolina now? And then we're getting my emails. <laughs> but uh, and John is LOLing. But yeah, what there, there's a lot of stores. I know you don't get a chance to get out to the no, stores. No, I want to do. though. I mean, I'm a big comic fan. You know, I, I've been collecting comics for years. I don't have. I'm sure I can't say I have the same knowledge Tom does because I know nobody really has the knowledge. <laughs> I, I, I can say my, my good buddy Bill McCray is pretty pretty solid on his knowledge as well, so I learn as much as I can, but I, I miss it. I miss going to the shops and just looking around and taking a look. And collecting. The collection has changed a lot nowadays. It has. Well, you know? It has changed yeah. a lot. It's not the well, same as it was. I mean, I used to be able to drop tons of money on periodicals, and you know, and, and then, of course, I was during the whole graphic novel you know, jump where that yeah. started you know, back in the, you know, 2007, 2006, 2008 areas. Where it started kind of coming on scene slowly, um, and then it's just it's that's pretty much all I can do now is a graphic novel here and there. You know, it, it's hard to catch runs to get the runs that you if, want. If you're not getting the pool, you can't you can't get right. The run. Yeah, yeah, no, and and a lot of times at the show we have to recognize yes, that people. We drinking. Yep. <laughs> Don't worry. And, and then I cheated tonight. It's already pre-made shots, but we're gonna have some buttery nipples. And I know America's gonna love that. And then we also got some kamikazes over there. Oh lord, oh man. Yeah, but uh, at the show only has to drive like 50 miles. Yeah, at, at the shows, we recommend that people instead of trying to buy a Walking Dead one, they've never read the series. Yeah. Go and buy a trade. Right. Read it. Make take sure a chance. Yeah, yeah, take a chance, and and trades are good because. It allows somebody to read a whole story and then decide whether or not it's a they, snapshot. Right. And decide know? whether or not they want to go and collect it. Yeah. You know, on the other hand, it's great to see when people come in with lists. Yes. And they sit there and they dig through your box and they're pulling books out. Mm -hmm. Or they come in with their phone and they have a list there. Gotcha. You know. Um so it's it's always good to see that. Now talking about a list, I'm gonna change the whole subject. Yeah, go ahead. How how do you, how do you keep control of what you have for I your have, personal collection? My my personal collection doesn't exist anymore. Mm. My personal collection was a lot of war magazines that are now part of the part of the bar of inventory. Tom and... was sleeping on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> Long drive. <home. laughs> um, no, uh, a lot of my personal collection got has been sold many times over. Okay. So, and then the war magazines we put into our, our inventory about two years ago. Um, so, the only thing I have now is I collect certain runs or certain things, and then after I get it completed, going to turn around and sell it. Gotcha. Um, I had close to 2,000 different undergrounds. Mm -hmm. There's like 3,000, mm -hmm. and I just it's easier to sell it than to sit there and, and sit on it. Try to remember it. what yeah. you have and don't have. Yeah. Um, and and that's the thing you have to you have to make a distinction between are you retailing stuff or are you trying to collect. Gotcha. And if you try to do both, then you end up having 
more stuff that you're trying to sell and stuff that you're trying to, and then you kind of get confused as to, did I buy this from here or did I buy it to resell? Gotcha. And, gotcha. and it's just easier for me to like sell everything. Just know that that's all you're dealing with. But right? that's all I'm dealing with. Right. But then there's, if there's cool books that I want, then I'll hold on to them for a while. That's fair. Or there's something that my partner wants and he's like, hey, I bought this from me. That's fine. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. You know, yeah. and then down the road, if he decides he wants to get rid of it, cool, we'll get rid of it. Gotcha. And if he wants to collect, you know, something, then that's his, gotcha. it's his thing. And same thing with me. I mean, like I said, I, I collected the whole 14 different variations of the Kill and Joke. Oh, wow. Have. Okay. And then, of course, one of my friends goes, well, you know, you got all these hard covers and absolute and everything else. So I'm not done. Now i got to finish getting those. Then once I've got them all, then I'm going to be like, okay, now it's time to sell. Gotcha. But gotcha. It, it's just... As being a collector, collector years ago, you know, when we went into shows, and I was like, oh, look, I can sell this book, and then you can get it back later. And right. that's the thing when you're you're buying all the time, you after a while start accumulating a lot of the same stuff. Yeah, of course, because you yeah. see what is hard to get rid of, yes. and what's hard, what's hard to sell, but then also what you want to keep. And then people are coming, constantly bringing in those same amounts of books and duplicates, and you're just getting stuck with them. Yeah, yeah, right. and, and and that's you know, but again, if you can move <clears> stuff, yeah. It just it makes it hard when you are a collector. Yeah. Because as a collector, then you want to keep every course. You got to be separate, right? My, and, my, my problem, huh? Well, and, <laughs> but again, you know, we we buy a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. and I'm going through stuff right now, trying to sort, and, and I'm like, well, we we'll keep this, we we'll keep this, and I start going through some other boxes, and I'm like, well, I kept all this in the other box. Right. So you know, you end up with multiples of stuff, and after a while, it becomes it becomes just too much. Mm -hmm. It becomes overwhelming. Yeah. So you can't figure out. You know where you're collecting and where you're selling, so it's just easier for me to take everything. So it's all for sale. Mm -hmm. It's just you know. What's easier for you to what what moves better nowadays, graphic novels or periodicals? I've always been. Curious. Um, graphic novels just slow down a lot. Gotcha. Um, at one time the mini shows you could get them. You know people were selling them. Yeah, they're just giving away. Yeah, full, full cover, half off. Yeah. Um, then you had Diamond Liquidate them, and um, you know they. They, there's certain ones that are really hard to find yeah. that are low print runs or out of print, mm -hmm. and, and you go on Amazon and they're eighty to ninety dollars. Yeah, easy. You know, but then there's other ones that are coming out that are c consistently coming out that aren't worth anything. Right, because the market's full of right. Them. And, and we found that. And that's when I buy them because I can get five, right. five bucks. <laughs> you know? And you get a better deal. But but we also find out that um like um certain comics, mm -hmm. you know, they only have a, a limited time shelf. Right. Oh, this this guy saw so and so was going to be in here. Look, it's little Normie and Spider Man. All of a sudden, it's a thirty five dollar book online. Yeah. And a couple of months later, everybody's like, "Who really cares?" Yeah. Is it hard to keep a, as a vendor and as a collector and a seller of those types of wares? Is it hard to keep track of the trends? Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. sometimes you're, you got to look at eBay. You got to see what's going on at the shows, um, whether or not you can purchase it quick enough. And then if you got it. You know, what's the next show you're going to be at that you can move it, or do you put it online and so sell it? Variables, man. There's a lot to it. Wow. And it, and it's and and that's like some of the stores that are out there. Them trying to keep up with everything is kind of hard. Gotcha. So Jonathan wants to know, Graven, did you take that hat from Wesley Snipes' closet? <laughs> yeah, I sure did. Absolutely. The only thing it's missing is my Optimus Prime print print uh, pin that goes right there. Well, see, Wesley had to sell it because of all the tax problems. So. <laughs> Yeah, Wesley had a lot of tattoos. Oh wow, it's crazy. That's yeah. funny. Thanks, Jay. I appreciate it, buddy. I don't. I gotta have the signature hat. I don't have my cowboy hat with me. I don't have your backflip hat as well. Your baseball cap. Mm -hmm. But I, my hat's not important. That's that's cooler over there. The shark. So I have a question. Oh, okay. with, with all this, what what <coughs> is your favorite favorite series? The Avengers. That's your favorite series. Oh, okay. Yeah. The original, the all the way up to about issue two hundred. Then after that, I didn't like it any longer. Mm. I read it on and off after that, but I, I liked all the earlier stuff because that's what I was reading when I was a kid. Okay. I was reading that. Um, when my brother and I would, we were growing up. My dad was in the Air Force, so we were out. We lived over in England for a few years, and at the one base, we'd go up and we'd buy comics once a week. And he would buy Witch Hour, House of Mystery, House of Secret. Mm -hmm. I'd buy Twilight Zone, Grimm's Fairy Tale, okay. Ripley's Believe It or Not. Because we didn't care about the superhero stuff. Right. But I always bought the Avengers. Okay. That hooked you. Yeah, that was that was just great. And, and the, the first one I remember reading was when they shrunk the Hulk down oh, to yeah. a microscopic universe. Yeah. But then you had to find the Hulk issue. Yeah. And I couldn't find that. It took <laughs> me almost five or six years before I could finally find it. 
from some kid that I traded like a Hot Wheels number one comic for, <laughs> so I could get that to read that story. That's cool, man. So yeah, that was kind of its own little Easter egg. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it was it was just neat. Okay. What what are <coughs> each of your favorite books, characters to read? Oh man. Well, we just we just learned yeah. Tom. Yeah. No, I like the Avengers. They were great. Um. But mine. You know, Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider was one the first ones I remember growing up. Every time I go to the barber shop, Ghost Rider, right there. All the time, huh? Yeah, and, and everybody knows I've grown into the, I, I like the Punisher, but Ghost Rider was always what brought me into it. Gotcha, gotcha. And it is, like I said, my earliest memories. Going to the barber shop, always seeing the comic right there. Yeah. Reading. Yeah. My biggest memories is that we used to, I lived in a, a trailer park and it was a, uh, had a, it was like a big U trailer park. And so you had trailers all around, but at the end of the main road, there was a gas station, you know. So we every Saturday morning, I'd get done going watching cartoons, Saturday morning cartoons, and we'd walk up to the gas station, and I would they had the spinner racks, and I would pick off that. Tag, tag Jimmy. So. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Jimmy's <laughs> um, And so I pick up pops there, and I play video games. They'd have a Double Dragon arcade there, old very first one, or Shinobi, and that's it. Then we'd sit there, a little table. We'd go buy our comics, and I'd sit down there and read them, play some video games, and buy some candy, and then we'd go hang out. You know, so those were cool days for me. As far as like a favorite book, it's hard for me because like you guys had those runs. I started out my first book I ever got was a Flash issue, and and it's so long ago I can't even remember the one I had. And then of course um, I moved into X Men. You know, I got into X Men pretty good, and then just continued jumping. Then I jumped into Indies. And with indies, there's not long runs. No, no. They're just short little snapshots of yep. books. So, I mean, if I said right now my favorite book, if I'll, I I'll check that out in a little bit, Jonathan. Yeah, yeah. Um, my favorite book right now is Black Science, by uh, Rick Remender and Mateo. Yeah, it's an indie title that's been out now. It's uh, a few volumes already. See, and there's Brenda from Cloak and Dagger. We've been talking Hi, about Brenda. that all night. Hi, Brenda. Right. But yeah, no, I like a lot of it. I like old old indie stuff, you know. Like uh, Eve Arnie was a big thing for me back in the day. Yeah, uh, Lady F, all the Chaos comics stuff. All Stephen Hughes. Oh, yes, Great definitely art. loved all that well, stuff. Well, it must be a good video topic because <laughs> Trish is going crazy over here. Oh, okay. Well, let's take a look at it then, right? Not later. <laughs> what's 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 happening with this video, Trish? It's the the shark video. Oh, it's the shark video for the new the couple that we yeah. talked about. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. But I did like X Men's run when they came back on. When Jim Lee like redeveloped some of the designs when he came on, they re-released. Oh yeah, the they had uh, Captain America and Black Widow and yeah, somebody else and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah all that yeah. stuff. I was really into all that. It was a big change for me. But I don't know. It's I just love comics. I've never get rid of them. I never got rid of that feeling. You know, I've always wanted to make comics and publish comics and be involved in that universe. So very cool. Yeah. You know, X Men's a good title. A lot of people like it. Um, it's definitely changed from what I used oh, to. Oh, it read. has. It needs some help. It, it, Am it, I wrong? <laughs> Does it? I mean, we can be honest. <laughs> the last, the last, I don't know, two, three years. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I just. I, I love know. the art that's been on. I know a few of the major artists have been working on I it. I picked but up this, a couple trades and yeah. read it, and I can't yeah. read it. I just can't. It's hard. We don't know where they're going with it. So, and I think a lot of it has to do with the inner workings and politics and what's going yeah, on with the know, it, it's, it's a tough read right now. Yeah. Uh, well, to be honest, besides Punisher, uh -huh. I haven't done a, a Marvel book in a while. Really? Really? I've heard about that. I mean, uh, people they, dropping off the places here they, and there. They, they, they lost me. I mean, Did they? Every year, revamping <laughs> the whole, the whole everything. Yeah, the event process. And I, I'm going to tell you, and everybody can say I'm sexist. I don't care. When you start turning all your characters into females just to try to get that, that demographic whole, in there. Look, yeah. look. We, we support. We're diverse Come well. up with a character for them. Don't change the already established character, character yeah, yeah. to to a female just because you can. Gotcha. I understand. And, and that's one of my biggest. I mean, they've done. If I'm correct, and maybe Tom can correct me here, they've done little stunts like that throughout the year. Yeah, yeah. Where a certain character becomes this gender bending yeah, type but story, they, but it wasn't a focal point. It yeah. just worked with whatever story they were trying to do. Is basically what you're saying. Yeah, nowadays, it's, now it's, it's they, they, they went, when they went through and they they just changed everybody all of a sudden. Gotcha. Well, all because that was the new big thing, the trends. Gotcha. Marvel or DC really didn't. Yeah. They they tried coming up with new characters, mm -hmm. whether they they failed or not. Right. 
besides making Lobo, you know, metrosexual. Yeah, I remember you know, that. Mm -hmm. I remember when they did that. But uh, yeah, they they, they, they haven't. <laughs> yeah. They haven't really killed the universe like Marvel does every year. Yeah. Okay, we screwed up, so now it's time to do it. DC does it about every five years. It's it's weird. It's just, it's just yeah, weird. Versus, it's just of Earth and yeah. stuff, and you can go yeah. back and think about it. Yeah. But if you think about it, if you go every five years and re restructure, I can understand that. Yeah. Because everything's kind of running their course. They want something new. Yeah, but when but, you keep popping out issue ones, yeah. yeah. But the hard thing is when people come to us at shows and they yeah. say, hey, I want to get Spider-Man number one. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want the one from the 60s? Gotcha. Or you want the amazing, the spectacular, the web? And then Amazing's been re relaunched three different times, yeah. so it's like it's too hard to figure out what you want to Yeah, get. the numbering issue is yep. all over the place. Oh, yeah. um, there's um, a lot involved with it. People come over and go, hey, I want to punish your comic. Okay, yeah. which one? Which one? Gotcha. Because you have five, six, seven series now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you got to count the miniseries that began it. Gotcha. And then the running, unrunning series, and then they kept coming back. Uh, uh, Marvel Knights, Max. Mm -hmm. We're well, trying to go adult yeah. with it. Yeah. 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 And... Don't get me started on the freaking variants. Ah, the variants. We had that all through the nineties, and here we are again. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, I, I can understand some of it, and, and I get it. There's some great artists out there, but if you're a person that has X amount of money to spend on books, and most collectors have to have every single thing. Of course. You gotta have every cover, every of course. issue. So, of course. Well, it, it was like Action <laughs> Comics 1000. I could understand that. That was a big milestone. Right. And you, I like how they did it. They had a different variant for every decade. Right. But then but you had then, all the steer variants. Then you went past that, mm -hmm. and you went into 100 more different variants. Yeah. If the store uh, what, buys $100 worth or 100 yeah. copies, then yeah. they get another variant. Another yeah. yeah. variant. Yeah. And another yeah. variant for another 250 Yeah. Well, I mean, because people made the variants an event as well. Do you guys think that there will ever be a new original character that becomes as popular as the most recognizable ones like Superman, Batman, Spider-Man? It could. Look look at Deadpool. Deadpool, hmm. out of the blue, who, who wasn't what he was now. He was right. a hardcore, yep. he was yeah. a killing machine. Yeah, yeah. They changed him, and he became an original character that... I think it's possible, to answer Nick's question. I yeah. think it's very possible... But these main companies have to take a chance. They have to invest into something different and not in the way they've been doing. And this is my opinion. Again, I'm not working for the companies, but we, you need, they need to create imprints that are separate from their iconic names. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of like how DC did Vertigo. You know, you get yeah. Sandman from that. Well, DC you did know? Vertigo, oh. DC did Milestone. Correct. Oh, right. And Milestone, they're My, bring, working to bring that back. Yeah, hey, but, but My, Milestone should have had Absolutely. much more. I agree with you. I agree with you, 100%. African American creators, writers, yes. and artists. Yes, yes. They, they came up with great characters. They did. And they, they were well received books in the beginning. Very much so. Very and then much DC so. didn't back it. No, not at all. That and it. And, yeah. it hurt, and that's the same thing in going into what I want to do. Like, my passion is I grew up, and they're, you know, having part of my family from the Native community. There was not a lot of Native American characters growing up that, multi, there, if any, that were actually decent. Red Wolf, right? Red Wolf. I mean, you know exactly. Apache yeah. Chief. Yeah. You know Shaman. Yeah. You know, uh, there's certain things that just they were there, but they were not there. You know what I mean? And 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 just like you said, milestone. There needs to be multicultural community books across the board that needs to have backing to infuse, so you can get new characters that people will create appreciate, you know, and then put up there as Spider Man, as Superman, as those things. But you gotta take those chances. And I know they don't want to well, well there's a company that, that took a chance. They were I think they were Minnesota and then they moved down to Texas. Mm -hmm. They came out with a comic that was more magazine size. Okay. Called Brother Man. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and, Brother Man, yeah. And, and it was great. It was it was well received. It was it was. It was a black and white. A lot of people like it. Mm -hmm. Even today I get people asking me about right. it. Right. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's just a cool niche kind of book. Very there was sure. only nine issues. Yeah. But again, it was it was done, you know, for multicultural kind of kind of thing. It right. wasn't it wasn't white guys drawing and writing. Right. If they were an Afro American person. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and, and this this is the thing is that we've got to get more diversified people in the business. I agree. Hundred percent. So. Hundred percent. And we're not going to get anywhere because of not having and that. Eric says, I see a lack of originality in all entertainment nowadays. It's sad. No new fresh ideas. Only reboot something that is not broken. Movies, comics, all of them. I agree. Which is agree. Yeah, we agree. But going back to Nick's, 
like I said, it could happen. You never know what character is going to go <laughs> off, or what's going to catch everybody. Because yeah. not only was Deadpool, look at Harley. Black Harley Lightning. was a, a Black Lightning. Black Lightning. Yeah. Black Lightning that's on TV was an original thing done by mm-hmm. an Italian man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So so if you know you have characters that are they're not like Wonder Woman and Superman right. and Batman and Spider Man. They're not out there like we see them. They don't now. have that history of time. Right. Behind them. But but with with time, there are characters nowadays that have a possibility of going somewhere, yeah. but it's whether or not people can get behind that character. Yeah. Right? And, and that character has to be written and drawn to have to attract have that people. voice and heart. And, that yes, and have the, have the voice and, and stuff that they need. And see, Black so, Lightning's been there for years. He didn't get no love until the show. The show, until the show, the show. Yeah. I was I mean, curious, I mean, being uh, you know, someone who sells and collects, you, did you see a spike when the show came out? Yes. Yeah. No. Pe- people. And but again, a lot of times you get speculators that get into it. Yeah. The good thing about certain things now is starting to bring bring out books from back in the '60s. There's a book called Lobo. Yeah. There was two issues that Dell put out. Mm-hmm. It's a African American Western mm-hmm. first black character to have his own book. Okay. Well. Okay. Well, so well, this is cool the, because it came out in the '60s. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. You also have another one, uh, another book um, out um, called uh, Friday Forrester. Okay. It's an African American woman that's a reporter. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a one shot, but she's the first one to have her own book. Wow. Okay. Again, this is all overlooked for years and years, yeah. but now that people are actually going back and looking at this stuff, they're, they're starting to see it. Yeah. And they're learning. And this is where history about books and, and some knowledge about what came out before is important. It's important because now people come back. I have one woman that bought, bought a. Friday Forster for me. She remembered when her mom had it when she was growing up, and she was at show with her daughter and showed it to her daughter, mm-hmm. and they bought it. And, and I mean, it went to a home that this woman remembered, and, and it meant something to her, and mm-hmm. she wanted to show it to her daughter yeah. and, and show her something that she remembered. Yeah, it's that. a piece of nostalgia. Yeah. It's her memory. So, there. so which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, As a collector, is that is that do you get that a lot that you appreciate that you have those moments where you can? Give yeah, I mean, it, to... because you you see. You see people that are taking books that they want, that they appreciate, or they remember, or, right. or hey, I had this, and my brother tore it up, or my sister sold it, or something. Right. You know what I mean? So it's cool that you can see that, but it's also cool as a person that when you're selling something that you bought from somebody and they ask you, hey, can you find it a good home? Correct. Because some of this stuff means a lot to people who buy it. Absolutely. Um, so we found a nice piece of art. Mm-hmm. We found a good home with Steve from somebody that we bought it from. There you go. Um, it, you know, and, and as you saw and tonight, it's not just thrown somewhere. No, it, it's, it's set. Place, yes, yes. It, it, but until but I it, can get a frame for it. Again, it came from the state sale to help help out these guys that are trying to help out the family. Gotcha. And and you know and, and that was their thing is they wanted the books and the and the art to find a good home. Now the majority of it is going to be in good homes. Yeah. And then whatever's left over is just going to go. But gotcha. we're going to do the best we can to make sure that where they go. It's not just we're trying to make money hand over fist. No, we I agree with you. People to walk away with stuff that they like yeah. and appreciate. Yeah, yeah. You know, and 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 when you sell something like that and they walk away and they're happy with it, then then you you feel good about it. Yeah. And it makes you want to keep going back out there and doing it. Of course. Of course. You know, if you're just sitting there and you're just selling stuff and you're like selling them everything and telling them, oh yeah, this is gonna be worth thousand yeah. dollars in a year from now. It's and a year from now. Yeah. You see the person and they're like. You know, this is only worth ten bucks. Then right. You're not too good of a salesman. No, that follows you, know, you, doesn't it? You're, you're a good salesman that you sold them that, but you're a bad salesman that because you fit in the line yes. regards to the situation. Whereas if you sell them something that they appreciate and they want, yeah, and and you tell everybody too to buy stuff that you like, which is you know? life with Archie. Yeah, life with Archie. Yes. It, it, you know, for the most part, it's it's never gonna be. Mm-hmm. Work much. Somebody's phone. <laughs> yeah, but it's definitely <laughs> like worth a lot. But no. in her eyes, it's worth but everything. It's, yes. Yeah. And, and, my, and my growing up years. Yeah. And that's yeah. something that you appreciate it and you want it, and and that's a good thing to have. Yeah. And, and that's that's the whole thing about when you're on the, on the side of the table that we're on, and we're selling stuff. We want it to go to a good home. We want that customer to come back. Yeah. If we don't have it, we want to be able to send it to somebody in that room that has it. We have that. And, I, and I've seen you do that many times. Hey, yeah. I didn't bring it this time, but I believe so and so over here has but it. But you have to because this keeps that person happy because they've gone over, they find it, and then if their owner say, hey, you know, that guy over there sent them over. Yeah. So, so draw a good blood yeah, with everybody. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and shows were started years and years ago back when they, they started them to to have fans go in and just meet each other and yeah. hang out yeah. and just to talk and stuff. 
And after a while, they became a business. Yeah. You know, and 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 we still want to talk to our, our customers. We still want to talk to to the people. Not like, oh, hey, here, here, it's ten dollars. You're not later. trying to rush them out. No, the we want to talk to them and say, hey, what, what are you collecting? What are you doing? Yeah. And you know, and after a while, your customer is going to get everything they want sooner or later. Yes. But you still want to build a rapport with them. Yeah. And you want to build a friendship. And I have got one guy that, you know, he comes to the shows and, and all I ask is he stops playing and shows me the artwork he gets. Because he's over here and he's talking to artists there. Mm -hmm. And that's all I ask is show me what you got. Yes. Yeah. He gets some really cool Live art. vicariously through Yeah. Because yeah. I don't have time to walk <laughs> right. over there. You right. know, and, and that's the thing. But see, that's just it with you guys. And, and that's with all three of you guys sitting here <laughs> and some of the other people in the shows. It's all about the love of it. But you got to enjoy it. Yeah. Otherwise, there's no sense in being out there. Sure. Not for all the miles that we put on driving and setting up and, you know, and and, and just trying to, you know, get out there and, and, and sell the stuff. But at the same time, you've also got to worry about whether or not you can buy stuff yeah. for the next show and pay all your bills. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it is a business to yeah. some degree. No, right. it, it's yeah. definitely a business. Jonathan said it's all about building relationships, which it is. Agree. Dave Finley from PG Imaginations down in uh, St. Pete says, hola. Hola. How's it going, man? That's Welcome to the up. show. We what got here? Oh. We got we got to do the shot. We're about to right, well, kill cheers. us. Okay. We cheers. got buttery nipples. I cheated right. this week and okay. made got pre-made ones. What are you just drinking? Drinking the, the center? Right down the middle. All, All right. right. That's good, man. Oh, that's tasty. That's very good. Wow. I like that one. A little fancy. He's he's gonna go look. He's gonna be like Trina. I'm on the way for some buttery nipples. All these that is. Wow. Eric says real passion builds real friendships. True. And Jay says <laughs> must have love and passion. And, 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 see, and, and buttery I, nipples. And <laughs> buttery nipples. I'm telling you, they were pretty damn good. Um, and, and see, I I feel like I'm always a bother. Because I come up to no, you never bother with uh, Tom and some of the other comic book. Because <coughs> I Tom knows I'm a wall book person. Okay. I I love looking at the books on the wall. Uh, my kind of live stream. Yeah, John. <laughs> so thanks for being here, son. Hey, it's Ross. Why you drug me back. Yeah, Tom, the Brotherhood. See ya on the fourth. Got to go sort some more books. Hey, Ross. Cool. And Russ is somebody that I knew in Maryland many really? years ago. Him and I used to set up at many shows. Oh, wow, okay. And uh, Russ lives in the Lakeland area. Okay. And um, we did drag him back into the business. That's awesome. And um, so he sets up the show. He's Closet Warriors. Okay. Um, does non sports cards and mainly a lot of comics now. Oh, all right. But yeah, yeah. Back in the day when we were in Maryland, we traveled on a lot of shows. That's cool. That's really yeah. cool. So. See, Jonathan, buttery nipples sounds yummy. Big J, I'm telling you, it's got two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Let's see. Twisted shots, buttery nipple. Yeah. They're good. It's a half and half. These companies get some good advertising, huh? Oh yeah, you gotta make sure you tag them too. You never know they might sponsor us. You need the shop box over there. Yeah. yeah, there you go. There Any go. kind of sponsor. Yeah, sponsor. Right. there you go. We're this good sponsor. Uh, Eric, I thought Tom was going to lick the inside of that shop box. <laughs> no, <laughs> Tom has enjoyed it. Thank you. <laughs> if this wasn't a family show, yes. But since it is, no. But like what I was saying is. Even though sometimes, you know, I buy from you, but not all the time. But you still always, I, I like to look to see what my books are worth. And you guys always have it on the walls. And we get that though from a lot of people. Seriously. But, but, but see, I, I and that's what makes me happy. You like, well, don't, you're not buying anything. Go away. It's yeah. always, hey, no, it's, you guys it, always because tell me. People are potential customers no matter what. Yeah. Whether they're, they're there and they're just spinning their wheels and they have no money, it doesn't matter. They're potential customers and you can't just blow them off. Right. Because if you do, you're not much of a business person because no. you never know how much money or what that person wants. Well, yeah, and it's it's like me and Monica doing shows, and I've always told her, I've told many people that try, and other artists that come up to us for feedback. There, they got, where you get those. There you go. Uh, Trina, I picked those up at Total Wine. 
Oh, yeah. well, I've been to Total Wine. Total uh, Wine and More. Yeah, Total yeah. Wine and More. I, I, I just learned of this place, and I like it because, as you see, where we have single service, yes. if we want to try something, we don't have to buy the whole yeah, thing back. Awesome. Have you ever been? No, I haven't. Oh, quick story. And okay. you got to tag this one person in, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I, I'm at a show, and I, I have my buddy Tony Hines with okay. me. Okay, okay. And, and Tony says to me, he says, we've got to go to Total Wine. I'm like, why we're going to get beer? He goes, gotta go here. We go in and you can make your own six pack. Really? Yep. So they can choose. Yeah. Huh? So I saw this one called Sweet Baby Jesus. <laughs> and I looked at it and I was like, I don't know, man. It had peanut butter and chocolate in it. It's oh, a beer. You know, okay. am I gonna buy yeah. that or not? Yeah. All right. So I pick out the six I want, and he picks out six that have skulls on them. So the next two nights after we get done with the show, we've gone out and, and had dinner and drank a few. We come back to the room and we tried the beers. There was a couple of beers that were real hard to choke down. I bet you. Yeah. And there were a couple that were good. <laughs> Total wine, that gets two, four, six, eight, <laughs> ten thumbs up. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I love it. His dad is Tony Hines. <clears throat> but no, Total Wine, since I found that yeah. place, I used to go to Publix for a lot of the, because they, they, well, like they do the same thing. You can build your own six pack. Yeah, okay. But this place has the selection. I mean, well, they have tons of stuff. To oh, yeah. From. Man, I thought I knew everything about Rome until I walked in there. Really? Oh. And, and they have labels in front that tell you. What's exactly? What's in it and oh, everything. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What it yeah, tastes like if it's a bold or whatever. Oh, yeah. The, so, that, so it's very good. All right. I was telling you about the blueberry uh, lemonade rum that I bought the other yeah, day. Yeah, I got yeah. it from there. Oh. They okay. have so many different. It's like, oh, I want to try that with some country type. You know, oh. Put it in there. Yeah. And, but yeah, I, I found this place. And oh, it <laughs> says, Tom, you need to get some for me. Something for me. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, and Scott just oh Scott up. Scott is actually um his company they are out at um Mexico Beach they were just up in um the Panhandle area um, out up there up in Panama and um he's posted some pictures what yeah, we see what we not, see on the news is nothing, nothing compared to what he's it. taking That's pictures true. of yeah so hey Scott you're doing a great job out there buddy be safe thanks for joining us Scott um but yeah he's he's posted some pictures and I mean. Wow. The de de devastation is, is, is told, yes. right? yeah, wow. it's, it's unbelievable. We have a, a friend up there, Rick Wick, Rick Wicklock. Okay, that um he has New Force Comics. Okay, and they've had like some major, major damage to their house. Um, their their store, the roof caved in in the office. So he's had to toss away a box. Well, I mean, I've, a couple I've, boxes of yeah, a couple hundred boxes, I guess, of books. So. Crazy. You know, wow. Mexico City was taken out. If you out. ever come out here, I got a beer for you. Scott's gonna be up at. at he if, unless they have him working. Unless okay. they have him working. Um, I'll, I'll have a I'll have a beer out in my my truck for you. There you we go. don't bring the beer in. We no, I'll allow it. you to bring it in. Okay. So I'll I was bring gonna it say in. just don't tell Tom. <laughs> no, no, no. Tom will allow you to bring it in. Scott's allowed to have one. He's doing a good job. He's working. I had a. Um, it was a wreck up there. When he was John was up there last week, it was right. Yeah, right John's there. John's folks actually live up in that area. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and and they, uh, from my understanding, they came down to stay with him. Yeah. And then his dad went back up, and then he went back up. Yeah. Well, he, he was telling us that there was looters trying to get into yeah. the house when oh, he yeah. came back up. Oh yeah. Yeah. He was oh, yeah. It's crazy. That. Well, I mean, I was unfortunately I was in Andrew when that hit. I was in Homestead when that hit. And I oh when I, Andrew came in. Yeah, oh yeah. Homestead got. Destroyed. I was in one of the trailers that got destroyed. It was the only thing left was the bathroom. Me and some friends were in the bathroom because so they Scott, had what kind of beer you drink? I'll make sure you get brother, one. and they had it all built for him. Right. And the roof came off, all the walls came off. You know, so I've been in the, I've been, I don't want to say fortunate. I was fortunate enough to survive, but I was able to, I was in a harsh hurricane. So whenever I see those things happening, I know the news isn't showing everything. Well, no, it's, no, not, it's, it's incapable to show everything that's going on. Well, they so, don't like to show everything. Right. They don't want to show. Correct. And there's a lot of other things that are involved with what they can and cannot show. But you're right. It's it, when What we saw, I can only oh, yeah. imagine. No, no, no. And, and he, he was taking pictures as they were driving in. And, he yeah. said, and, and the first set of pictures he put up, he said, were uh, nothing compared to where they had first pulled into. Oh, wow. And then... After they finished in Panama, like I said, they're up there in Mexico Beach now, and he posted some pictures up there, and you're just looking, and you're like, you know, even though it's been a few weeks, and it's, it's still, it's not it's ever still, going to get back to normal. Yeah, and I mean, and, and you think back to like when Katrina came through, yeah, 
and, and everybody in New Orleans, yeah. and, and when the news goes in and they show you, and all these houses have all the drywall out, right? because years ago we had a, a water heater that blew in our house, Okay. and it had to come in, and, and it was, we were lucky that it was just in the bedroom area and the mm-hmm. kitchen a little bit, so for three days we had these big old fans in there, and they were blowing there and they're trying to get all the water, you know, dry moisture, out everything, yeah. moisture, and I had to go underneath the house and cut the insulation because we're in a manufactured home. Gotcha. So all this water would drain out. I mean, tons and tons of water that came out. Yeah. And you're like, you're looking at all this. Then we have to come back in and cut all the drywall out. Wow. I mean, and that's just, we just had a, a hot water heater break. You can imagine get, everybody. Yeah, you know, these yeah. people got flooded. They got their houses totally torn yeah. down. Yeah. That's just, it's, we've been very fortunate in this area. John. Um, he said his parents just finally got power on Monday. Sweet. And Scott says 10 days ahead of schedule. Great. Good job. And Trina says total devastation from the pictures Scott posted. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But see, he, you, 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 you missed the shark <coughs> that ended up on me, you know, from the hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm drinking, just to get rid of the pain of a shark on my head. <laughs> Well, he's going hungry, there ain't no chump there. So, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll never get invited back now after that. <laughs> oh, I don't care. Now, Tom, I, I, I know I, I'm going back in the history. I know you don't like a lot of questions asked about you. Now, I know you used to be in construction. Yes. So how did you get into comics from the construction? Side? No, I was doing comics way before then. Okay, so you were doing comics? Yeah, I was... And, when I was a kid, we read comics. We we collected a few, gave a bunch away, and then got collected again. And when I got out of high school, I was going to sell everything I had, and uh, went to the show. And uh, <laughs> what did you say? Shark, do, 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 do. <laughs> and then um, then went and um, turned around and made like a bunch of money and came home with uh, like 15 more long boxes of comics. And after that, I started deciding to do shows all the time. Gotcha. So I did them on the weekends. And, uh, you know, you work your regular job and yeah. do the shows on the weekends when you can. Um, after I moved out of Massachusetts, I moved down to Maryland. And when I was in Maryland, we were doing shows. You could do do two shows every weekend. You could do one show on a Saturday somewhere and a show on Sunday somewhere mm-hmm. else. Mm-hmm. So you had Maryland, Pennsylvania, Ohio. New Jersey, Delaware, Virginia. Yeah. So I mean, we could travel all around there and do shows all the time. That's awesome. And we were pretty busy. And during the '80s, most of the time you could go to you go a baseball card show or anything and just sit there. And basically, no customer service. They just came over, pick what they want, threw money and left. Yeah, I was always curious yeah. about that because yeah. I was very young at that time. Yeah, no. So. I, and, and if you don't old. No. I'm yeah, no. Old. Tom, Tom knows he's old. <laughs> no. Tom graduated in '80, so. Um, you know, if you were born after that, I'm old. <laughs> I was born before that. Yeah, I was born before that too. But yeah, no. Um, it's just it, it's um, it's different depending on where you're at as to how many shows you can do and what you can do in certain areas. <laughs> and down here in Florida, you don't see as many books as we used to see up there. Oh, okay, that's good. Um, um, you know, everybody goes, oh, everybody's retiring to come to Florida with their comics. No, everybody sells that stuff. Mm-hmm. If you you make it to Florida. Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then down here you get comics that are brown and brittle and bug chew mm-hmm. and you know no one knows how to take care no, of them. And, and, and the thing is if it's not climate controlled and they're out there in a the bag and a board, yeah, they sweat inside that bag and board. Yes, they do. And and then you get moisture damage down on the bottom of the book or on mm-hmm. the top, depending on how you store it. Yeah. And it, it's just it all uh, plays a pivotal role yes. in the value, but people still have a skewed idea on value of comics. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. It's, I mean it's, it's because of eBay. Yeah. At Amazon. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and but again, it's you know I saw this on eBay for a hundred dollars. Okay, is that what you saw sold for, or is that what you saw somebody <laughs> ask for? Mm. You yeah, know what I mean, exactly. and that's that's the key thing. What did it really sell for? But see, I do I do the same thing with the pops. You know, what I mean, so all that. Yep. Oh yeah, this this goes on eBay for a hundred and fifty dollars. But what did it sell for? Yeah. That that's the asking price for it, yeah. but it actually went for twenty five bucks. And, Tr- and Trina is telling on you. Yeah, when when you and her first started dating in 86, you only had 10 long boxes. Yeah, because I had slowed way down then. And John says now it's a house and four storage <laughs> units. No, John, just three. 
And, and then uh, yeah. Jonathan, Big J, says, shame on you, Graven, for calling Tom old. <laughs> and then Trina's like, Thank Tom you, Big J. <laughs> yes, sir, I think we need a second home, LOL. Uh, I think I need a beer on that, that bottle there. Yeah. yeah. Please, Miss Trish, thank you. <laughs> They're picking on me too much. <laughs> oh, have fun, though. Enjoy no, 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 no. Glad to it, it's not a normal, like, video that it, it just happens but okay i'll believe you i gotta believe you when we're done uh that's cool but no uh, it's 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 very different though nowadays anybody you know, else you get out there right now you're trying to collect you can grab me one yeah the collecting uh environment changed so much nowadays man yeah but like i said with the whole ebay and you got enough lines oh um, he can have it on i can do it without yeah, lines. Okay, thank you mm -hmm. I, I, I hate eBay because that makes everybody a uh, educated seller. I mean, I have books and things I want to sell on. Uh, you know, people say we should sell on eBay and see if I can make some funds from it. You know, but I don't even know where to begin. Number one, when it comes to that stuff, and I really don't know the proper pr pricing in regards to some of those things. You know, like I you wouldn't take a knife and cut it in half again, Trish. Thank you, Trish. Of course. John, Tom, are you doing Spooky Empire this year? I am not. I passed on this year. Did you do it last year? Um, I did do it last year, and I did it the year they they had it in the um when they had the hurricane. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, then they canceled it and they did it later in the year. Yeah, and that kind of that kind of was not as well attended. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hey, I think, they got Elvira this year. With yeah, no, own, no, no, no. They they exclusive pop. They've got Elvira. They've got Peter Chris coming. Thank yep. you, Chris. Yep. Yep. Um, now, I do have to admit, it'd be cool to meet Elvira. Christina Peter Peterson, yes. I think that would be really cool to meet her. Steve would love it. Oh, I would. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I, every I, guy's crush. Uh, uh, when every I was here, kid. Kid. every Saturday night, uh, yeah. I was there. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say they have her in the past. They yeah, have. Like, they uh, probably uh, have. Five or six years ago. Yeah. This year, they're doing an exclusive pop release with her. Yeah, yeah. very cool. Yeah. Which is the same as all yeah, the Peter other Yeah, Peter Chris, that's, that's who's going to be there, yeah. too. Now, see, what I don't understand, <laughs> like with Peter Chris being there, yeah. and they're showing him um, still in makeup and all that, but he sold the rights to that. Yeah. So I don't understand how they can be bringing it up because he he brought, sold the rights. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, he did. Unless he, he has some kind of um, clause, and clause in there, yeah, some, something that says, hey, I can use this for promotional. I don't see Gene Simmons doing that. <laughs> no, Gene, Gene is... Gene is all about how much money Gene can make. Yeah. Yes. Um. In the past, they've had Ace Freely yeah. on the show. Mm -hmm. Yep. So they're having the whole Ace Freely on there one year yep. too. Ace Freely was there last year. Yep. Yep. But I'm just saying with with uh, Peter, I just I know the whole thing behind him selling the rights that he yeah. could never be in makeup again and yeah and all that. So yeah, because Trina went the one year when when they had Ace Freely there. We got there that year set up. Yeah. I've never been there. Yeah, I've never been to Spooky. We did Spooky for about eight years straight. Yeah, I've done, um, it I've done it about five times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't. We haven't done it in a while because it either falls up on the freak show situation where we're doing that, you know, or another show in between, wherever it may be. So yeah, it's it's it's, it's an interesting concept. Hey Brenda, how you doing? We've been so talking nice. about you all night. <laughs> Yeah, Brenda has a lot more court courage than I do to go out there and be on a Facebook all the time. So this will probably be the first one that you guys see me. Once no, I get invited well, back. Well, he'll be back. Actually, he'll, be back. <laughs> he, he'll only come back for the burgers. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate Tom being out here talking about his amazing shows and how much he impacts everybody. Uh, we think it's great. Impact. Couldn't do it without everybody. Yeah, you can thank Spooky. I'll have to go back and <laughs> watch. Yeah. yeah, we were nice. We, we talked about you and your store. Yep, we've been talking about the store and everything. Broken Dagger. Yep. Yeah. How, how whenever we have uh, the Daytona show, we make sure that we always stop by and see you guys at the store. And you want to know it? Uh, Peter. I, off the top of my head, I charged it for autograph. Wasn't mm, on the site. Yeah, you know. no, sorry. You would have to. John, you would have to turn around and, and message Spooky and find out. Mm -hmm. um, that's if they answer you. Yeah, 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 that's. Sorry, guys, I'm not allowed to tag Spooky. Okay. Okay, yeah. so you can't tag Spooky? No, or... Yeah, certain ones they won't let you tag. Yeah, mm -hmm. they have that function turned off. Um, yeah, Cloak and Dagger, right? Is the, Cloak and Dagger. Every time I hear that, I think of the old movie. 
Yeah. The old movie, Cloak and Dagger, with uh, Daphne Coleman. Yep. I think I love that movie. It, it was. I actually watched it on Stars not too long ago. Yeah. With yeah. about the video game. Yeah, and, I always got freaked out when he was when the old woman. I think the woman was trying to to kill him or what uh-huh. have you, and didn't realize the old was, man and yeah, the old woman. woman. Yeah, yeah, I didn't realize that they were bad people. And you're, I was little when I was watching it. I was like, it's. I don't know. It's yeah, really old cool. people weren't supposed to be bad. No, no, back then. Yeah, no. See, you know, they were. You thought your grandparents. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because Danny Coleman was a figment of his the imagination, imagination yeah, as exactly. he was playing the game. Well, let's let's switch then to Cloak and Dagger a little more. I'm like, what do you think of the new show? That's been out on Freeform. Have you watched it? I, I, I watched the uh, first couple episodes and then I, I recorded it. Yeah. I played yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah, I've only seen the first two episodes. Yeah. That's I it. did too, and, and, and it didn't grab me. Well, I, I saw the first two. I have it. I have it so I can watch it. Yeah. yeah. But I, I just haven't sat down to. Yeah. Because certain ones that they do grab you right yeah, away. You absolutely. Sit there and watch it. Some are still burns. Um, but but it, it, it's, it was definitely better than the Iron Fist thing that Netflix put out. Oh, yeah. That's been quite slow. That was, that bothered me a lot because I wanted more from that. Yeah, I, I expected well, I think more. Everybody did. did you see the second season already? Mm, no, no I did not miss it much. There's some cool things they did with the second season, but it still wasn't enough. To the Luke do. Cage series, I saw the first yeah. season. That's good. I got to watch the second. second season. Was good, but yeah, I have to watch the second. So what do you think? Because they they've already canceled Luke Cage. Okay. I, I think Daredevil's next. Well, I think they're going to keep Daredevil. No, I I don't think so. I want to tell you why. Okay. Since Disney starting their streaming service next year. You think it's all going to Disney streaming? Oh, yep. Yep. Do you think because that they're going to Luke Cage? Do you was think, stupid to cancel? Do you think that they'll take Luke Cage and and and, and Iron Fist and turn it into Heroes for Hire? Maybe. I would hope so. Because that seems to be a more prevalent name that they're using nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Because I mean, Power Man, Iron Iron Fist, separate. Doesn't make as much sense as, as you know, Heroes for Iron. Okay, David. Well, Albert says Tom is the comic king of Florida. Oh, right. well, thank you, Albert. <laughs> and then David says. But he's the comic king of, of, of Maryland. So that's okay. okay. Um, David says you have to watch the whole season of Cloak and Dagger. It's good. Okay. All right. Yeah, I've only seen two episodes, so I'll have to give it a shot. Um, what was it? <laughs> oh, what was the other show that came out? It was the X based on X Men on the Hulu. The Gifted. The gifted? I haven't seen that yet. Was it the kids? That's one with the That's kids. That's Runaways. 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 Runaways is phenomenal. I, I love it. I'm waiting oh. for the second season. Runaways is phenomenal. Gifted, I watched part of it. I watched like five episodes, and I just couldn't get into it enough. I don't want to see Don't ruin that for me. I've no, 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 no. I, I, I watched the first episode. It caught me enough to watch. It's another one that I, I yeah. recorded, and okay. I didn't get to it. Um, now, what about Cobra Kai? Have you either one of you seen no, all that? No, no, I haven't seen that. What do you think? Oh, man. Is it good? Seriously, you get two different views. Oh, okay. You get to see Danny and you get to see Johnny. Okay. And Johnny, I take is a totally different character now. Oh, okay. And I kind of look at at Danny as kind of... The asshole. Yeah, what a schmuck. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's getting two different views and looking at it two different ways now. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, and, and it has flashbacks to Mr. Miyagi That's and everything. Cool. And, and some stuff. But Daniel Rodriguez, so he it basically the premise is he's a car owner and he's big time, uh, and Johnny's falling on hard times, and he's got a wife and they've got a kid and they're separated and it's like there's all a lot of sudden, emotional hard yeah, stuff. Yeah. All of a sudden he brings Cobra Kai back. Oh wow! And he and basically he's training these nerds that are getting picked on, and after that the series is just like tremendous. Oh, that's awesome! So if you get a chance to sit down and watch okay. it, I highly okay. recommend it. Yeah, I haven't watched it. I haven't seen it. By that one too. Yeah, Eric, no, it, it's really good. Eric says they cancel Iron Fist too. Yeah, uh, we were just talking yeah, about that. Yeah, I, I I think after they run Daredevil, I told you <laughs> in, in a couple months. I say within three months we're gonna hear that it was canceled. Um, Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones. Once they release this season, I give it a couple months. Canceled and Punisher because they already have season two set up. Yeah. Once it runs, canceled. Well, I know. Season- now Punisher, I haven't seen yet. So oh. everybody's told me it's great. It is good. It's good. And, and again, that's another thing that I have that's recorded. I just haven't yeah. sat yeah. down and watched. Did it. you watch Daredevil season two? Yes. With Punisher? No. I only watched like one episode or something. That's as far as it goes. Okay. Before you go to Punisher, you gotta watch. You gotta watch Daredevil season two first. Okay. Yeah. And then go to Punisher because we're coming up on what Daredevil season three, three is already out. Yeah, okay. Daredevil season three just came out. I watched it. Phenomenal. I haven't. I haven't got oh, a chance right. to. But uh, so good. There you go. And then John Cobra was also yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, Cobra Kai is 
If you get a chance, you guys got to check it out. Okay. It's just, it's very, it's very okay. interesting to see, see the role yeah, switch. Because Johnny has a son, and Daniel has a daughter and a son. Oh, okay. And the daughter actually knows karate and everything because Daniel taught her. Okay. And the son is like, he's just like, a normal play on my video game. Like, yeah. Don't care about nothing. Yeah. Mom, bring me a cup of water, right. even though it's sitting on the table. Oh wow. Kind of kid. Oh, gotcha. So you've really got to watch the show. That's gonna be interesting. Hey, I, <laughs> Gus, I'm just gonna say, hey Gus, um, this is my friend's husband. He's the one that worked had to put Kelsey's car back together. Oh, well, thanks for that, man. And Jimmy Smith, can somebody talk to CGC about? Their Newton rings. The Newton rings are when they've been slabbing books nowadays. Um, they, I don't know if they're using virgin material or not, but it looks like you have oil inside there, and that's what they're called Newton rings. Okay. And it's, they took them back in the beginning, and they, they repaired a lot of them, <laughs> and started to show up again. Um, I haven't heard of the Newton rings. This is new to me. You know, nothing I can say to them because they don't listen to me, and I don't spend a lot of money. However. At the show, you can talk to agents of slab who have a good relationship with them, and you can and also send them some uh, some uh, some emails, Jimmy, and tell them you're very unhappy. Um, and if I can, I will locate their their main person and see if I can't get them to come to the show, so you can talk to them in person. Good enough. That's the best I can do. Now, David says, "What's your verdict on the <coughs> movie? I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet either. I, I haven't have. seen it. I have." What is your verdict? Hot garbage. Hot garbage. Horrible. <laughs> horrible. <laughs> Sorry. That's horrible. I, and what's crazy is there's so many people that love Venom so much, they're finding ways to defend the movie. And there's no defending it. It's, there, it is not a Venom movie. The, he, he, it looks great. Listen, I don't really say much about some of these movies. I kind of give people peace of mind. But that was a waste of money and a waste of Tom Hardy's talent. He could have done another superhero while he gave it his best. Well, okay. He could have done he, something he, he else. He doesn't have a good track record no, with doesn't. the superhero. No, he doesn't. I mean, he was the worst Bane in the history of oh, Bane. Bane was horrible. I mean, I, I love the movie to a certain extent, but that character was handled wrong. It just okay. was. He did a lot to get in that shape and to get in that character, and I commend him for what he was doing. You got, I mean, I loved him in Mad Max. Mad Max's Fury Road was an awesome movie. I, I, he's an amazing actor. It's just... He wants, you can see his heart's in it. He so much wants to be in that community to do a solid superhero and to get that opportunity. And he gets that opportunity, and they're literally manipulating around the story to give us a type of Venom movie that has none of the Venom nostalgia. There, it's just literally like a play-by-play -play movie with a character that has no ties to Spider-Man whatsoever. There's no ties whatsoever to it. There's little moments, little character names that get thrown in. You're like, okay, that, I see what universe you're in. Okay, I see what you're doing here. But it falls flat. It's action's horrible. The CGI looks like it's been rushed. It's not. It, the only thing that's good about the CGI is the symbiotes themselves. The actual symbiotes when you see them, really well done. But moment it's put on Hardy. Moment you see him and other characters being at attached to it, ridiculous. It's just I don't know. It sounds very harsh, but I really wanted to like it because I do love Venom. I love the character, and uh, we'll see where it goes. So you got two. We didn't see it, and one that's hot, hot mess. Hot. <laughs> well, it's the first trailer. I told him last time we talked on the show about it. It's the first trailer I ever watched in my life, and I've watched a lot of them that just made me feel like I need to go take a shower. It's so nasty looking. Linda says hi. Hi, Linda. Loves the hat, or she likes the hat with a little lovey face. Thank you, Linda. Um, David says, interesting. Eric said he liked Bane. Well, that says a lot about you, Eric. Um, <laughs> David Family, all and my best friends Wars, guys. like it so far. And Big J says Bane was good, needed to be taller. No, Bane wasn't <laughs> good because he, he gets injected and becomes three times his size, guys. Come on. That's the whole point of the Venom serum in He's yep. a little guy yep. who pumps it up and becomes big. And He's all little full hoop. See, the only reason Eric likes Bane because he sounds like Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's a no. <laughs> mad love to you. Mad love to you. <laughs> no, and David, with all your customers saying they like it so far, that's the interesting thing with Venom nowadays. 
there's a weird divide where there's a lot of people appreciating the movie for what it is, like a cult following, if you will. And it, that's something I, I definitely am interested to see happening. I don't know why, but it, it, it is happening. Okay, Brent, Brenda is saying FunCon is this weekend at Cloak and Dagger, if, it, if anybody's interested. FunCon is good. I used to be part of it okay. at the beginning. Uh -huh. um, I know they don't invite me anymore because you know, my weekends have gotten busy. I can't gotcha. always show up. Because they used to even try to schedule it around my schedule gotcha. so I could be part of it. What's a, what is it particularly? Uh, it for is, that okay. Like you go to a toy and comic con, uh -huh. this is all pops. Every table is pops. Oh, People good. come yeah. in to buy the pops. Okay. You trade with everybody. Yeah, buy oh, the trade. It, it okay. is a big thing. Okay. Then you get M collectibles that comes in and buys everybody's collection, and you know everybody walks away happy. <laughs> ah. Oh, and by the way, M collectibles will be at the Daytona Beach show. Ah, see, there you they go. Will be set up. And yes. Eric laughed. LOL. Um, Jonathan. LOL. Replying to Orlando Collector Deviants. Adrian Barker. We heard you were talking about us, and we love it. Thanks for supporting small businesses. That's the art place. Yes. That's the art yes. place. Can you, yes. Thank yes. you, Adrian, for your work in doing that. We have to come by and check it out. Yep. Adrian, I'm telling everybody about your event tomorrow, and what a great story you got. Very cool. Uh, can I take the kids to see Venom? Um, yes. Yes, you can. I mean, uh, there's some parts in the movies where he's supposedly eating people, but you don't really see that. Remember, it's a PG-13 movie. Um, there's no real, there's no nudity. There's no uh, major Mon Monica. There wasn't any major nudity in the in the, or scenes, correct? Well, no, I heard but I also kind of lost interest. In yeah, the there's one quick scene with his girlfriend, but nothing that's that's risque for children. Um, and of course, there's a part where Venom kisses himself. We'll, I'll leave you out to watch that. Okay. Now, Eric and says, Pops, Pops, and Pops yes. about FunCon. If you ever want to see some of the highest um, priced Pops out there, uh -huh. you go you go to Cloak and Dagger this weekend. It sounds like and, a monster and, truck rally in FunCo. FunCon. <laughs> but you come out, you will, you will see the highest dollar really? Pops okay. out there. Um, these guys bring them out. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah, very rare and hard to get ones. Yeah. All right. That's why M Collectibles loves going there. Yeah. Because at the end they make an offer, and then they have those quality pops back at their store. Yep. Awesome. The M Collectibles deals in a lot of high end stuff. All big comic cons are becoming everything but comic books. Is this hurting comic collecting? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna have to tell you that it definitely hurts my wallet when I go to the show, Jimmy, because you've seen me at shows and there's been ten other comic book dealers, so. As someone that goes there looking for comic books, you're going to find that you're not going to be happy spending all that money to go in there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I do think that that with the bigger shows becoming oversaturated, oversaturated yeah. with guests yeah. and, and high-end guests that people are going to spend money on and having a lot of weapons and, and stuff and jewelry and Crafters. And like we talked earlier, yep. insurance companies, uh, mattress, sales. mattress salesmen, a window for Get your nails the, 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 at the Tampa Megacom, we had somebody in there and they had a bed that was set up and they had somebody dressed up as black cat and you could go over and try out the sleep, sleep mattress. And it was like, <laughs> seriously, you're selling a bed at a comic con. The cool thing is you had Black Cat on it. What did he do? Well, after you, um, after you visit the bong booths, you're going to need the bed. Yeah, yes. And, and there was the other thing. There, there are bong booths now at, at these bigger shows. <laughs> um, so the smaller shows are a better deal for a lot of people because you're only paying anywhere from 5 to $15 at the most skip. Gotcha. Um, Daytona is 10 bucks. Online it's 8 And then select stores it's $7. So... You get a better better price break there coming in. You get a better chance to walk around and see more collectible stuff. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that comment in a second. Well, go ahead. <laughs> well, well, first of all, let, let's go over here. Um, Paige, oh yeah, what else? Paige uh, Curry says hi, Tom. Well, hi, Paige. How are you? And, then, and I hope John's got a lot of money in the ring ring fund right now. And then uh, Eric says, "Yep, we're flying to Jim. Yeah, about the cons." And we tagged M Collectibles, and then David said that's why Daytona show is awesome. Well, thank and, you, Dave. You you can ask them in the garage tonight while we're cooking. I I say that Tom is very humble. He doesn't <laughs> think the show is as good as it is. It, it is our show number one. It's not. Oh, 
just not my show, just everybody that's involved in that okay. show. Okay, everybody's show that you put on to let everybody be part of. Mm -hmm. That we're all part of. But you let everybody be part of it. No, I don't let anybody do anything. <laughs> for the right price, everybody can be part <laughs> yes, of it. Yes, for the right price, they can be part of the show. Okay, but like I was saying, Tom's, <laughs> the Deland show and the Daytona show is one of the last few actual toy and comic cons. And Jacksonville. And, 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 and Jacksonville. Yeah, we, we, okay. we do it once a year up there. And that's, a, that's more of a marketplace where we don't have guests and stuff. But it's, well, it's well, comics and, and toys. And you know I love that one up yes. there because I come away with a lot of stuff. But anything that you have your hands touching, and I, I'm going to be honest, is still a true toy and comic convention. Yeah. So far, I haven't gotten greedy yet. Well, you yeah, haven't. <laughs> but the, the thing is, you have that. The other ones, I don't think, have, this is my personal opinion, guys, okay. just remember this. They don't have the right to call themselves a comic convention. Mm. If you if you if you have only one vendor there with comics, you it, it's not a comic convention. Yeah, I I know people come there for other things, and I I I, I say good, go for it, do it. Mm -hmm. But you're a show, you're not a comic. Yeah, show, you know. Yeah, like, like MegaCon is not. MegaCon is no longer the the comic show that it was. It yeah. started off as. Yeah. As a gra grassroots <laughs> movement, um, it grew pretty big underneath Beth, Beth and Christine yeah, when they yeah, ran it. Yeah. Um, the then um, Cross Jim bought into it, and then they got out of it. Yeah. Um, which is a shame because that's a comics business that that was grassroots movement here yeah, in Florida. Been great to continue um, going. And and you know it, it's a shame that they're not around any longer. Absolutely. Um, the, the crazy thing was that that the the owner. Actually, had all the artists and well, writers and, and everybody. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he had them all come down and live in Florida and work out of. It was a strategic hub. It was a yes. business. Yes, yes, but he had them go right there to work there. Yeah. Whereas most companies had you do something and send it either yeah. in the mail Everyone or send it on other yeah. 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 So, which was was really different and cool, especially the time I went there to to visit Beth and Christine, mm -hmm. and and we were talking about MegaCon and, and doing stuff. Yeah. And they let me come in and they showed me it, gave me nice a tour there, across right? it. It was incredible. It was, wasn't it? <laughs> incredible yeah. the amount of stuff. But again, the show has changed so much. It's yeah. grown. It's become big. And once you become that big, you have to bring more and more stuff. To offset bring the people cost. in to offset the cost. Yeah. And when you run a convention center, the price becomes thousands crazy. Of thousands of dollars. No, it's hundreds, not thousands, it's now thousands. Of thousands. Hundreds of thousands. It's, yeah. it's hundreds of thousands to a million or a million wow. and a half. Wow. Because yeah. now you have to ensure that. You're, yeah. And they're not there for three days. They're, they've got their setup day, a day after. So they're there four, five, six days, yeah. sometimes sense. a week. Well, yeah, because it's a four day show now. Now you're yep. there as a vendor. You're there for a whole, you have to take care of <laughs> work if you have a job mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah, oh, yeah, no. And, and, and these bigger shows have really priced everything out. When you're paying $25 to $45 for the day, $18 to park, Yeah. you go in and it's 2 to $5 for a soda. Correct. You go over, you stand in line, you stand in line for three to four hours. You meet somebody for 30 seconds, they say, sign something. You're like, oh my God, I met so and so, I've been wanting to meet him. You were there for 30 seconds. Yeah, exactly. You were shuffled through like cattle. Yeah. Yeah. And you spent a hundred and some dollars. You got your picture with them. And, and for some people, that's a big thing, finally meet this person. Yeah, yeah, and I respect that. But then you have no money to buy any collective. No, there's no money to spend anywhere. Whereas if you come to a smaller show, it's less money to come in. Most of them have free parking. Yeah. Uh, food is less expensive than they have food trucks. Mm -hmm. um, you're able to walk up to most of the guests. And if the show starts getting too big, that's when I'm going to sell it, and then I'm going to go start a small show somewhere else. Yeah, because you want to keep value at it. The show is right there right now where it's manageable. There's good value to it. Yeah. There's guests. There's vendors. Yeah. There's a good assortment of comics and toys. Of course. We've got one person doing some international candy. We've got one person doing some jewelry. Mm -hmm. Um, we have one guy that does decals. Mm -hmm. Where if I brought another decal person or another candy person, there'd be no market for them. Correct. You know, it's well, good to have competition, but yeah. you've got to know what your clientele is. Well, you speak volumes there because I think I think what a lot of promoters try to do, and maybe some of them slip and they don't realize that they're they're not able to do it, or maybe they just don't like <laughs> about it. I think it's important that you pay attention to who you bring in. Well, you have to, to understand and, and what you, vendors you have where. And who's uh, doing a lot that. of shows jury in who they bring in. Yeah. Dragon Con is one of them. Yeah. Send us pictures of your setup. 
Show us what you do. Yeah. And it takes years to get in there. Absolutely. Does. And and 35 plus years that I'm running it, it still sucks setting up and trying to get out of there because they're so unorganized. Yeah. But it's a great show. That's I heard that too. Yeah. They have tons and tons of people that come in there every day mm. and they buy stuff. Yeah, they're willing to spend the ready. They're, they're expensive. not a comic show. They're a fantasy sci-fi experience, um, if you will. It's it's a little bit of everything yeah. that's in there. And, and that's why you've got to figure out what your clientele is, number one. And then number two, you got to bring in the right amount of people. And I had one woman get upset with me when I told her I didn't think that her stuff would fit. Mm-hmm. She was more than welcome to come and pay and try it. Yeah. But I wanted her to understand that if she drove out there, paid for a hotel, and did the show, and didn't make any money, that was on. I know she that needed person. to know way in advance. Yeah, I know that person. Okay. So, okay. So now we're going to go to the comment <laughs> you couldn't see. We're going okay. back to, to the bed in Tampa. Uh-huh. All right. Because um, David said um, Tom was on that bed all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't want to know why. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Uh, I guess I'm sleeping outside tonight. Then Adrian um, Barker was saying, Tom is the man, humble and kind. What superhero has his characteristics? Uh, it used to be uh, Superman. Yeah. yeah. We, we, back when he was that's, a Boy Scout. That's you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just me. I'm no superhero, that's for sure. Big J is over here. I, I remember that with Black, with Black Jack. Jack. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> See, that's why I couldn't get on the couch because Big J was over there. <laughs> yeah, he, they were like a booth over, okay. an aisle, two booths over from me. Uh, and I mean, and we were all like, "What the hell is this?" You know what I mean? It's. Page <laughs> saying, "I'm still waiting." Ha ha ha. Page, I'll work on him. I swear, he will get you a ring, and he will ask. And then Brenda absolutely loved Tom and Trina. Blessed to know both of them. Oh, and. I'm like chop liver and Trisha. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, Dave, Bedcon is next on Tom's agenda. <laughs> Ooh, oh, I'm in. Big, Big We're J working says, on that. <laughs> Big J says, don't get greedy, Tom. Uh, no, sir, not my plan. Then Jonathan said, very true, Tom, when we're talking about the cons. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And Trina says, have you mentioned about vet ticks, Tom? I have not. Um. Just so you know, we've been working with Vetix for, I guess, the last four years. Um, Vetix is a veteran society okay. um, where we donate free passes for people to come in from the military. And we donate anywhere from 100 to 200 tickets every time. And at the end of the event, um, Vetix asked the veterans to turn around and take a photo mm-hmm. of themselves in there with the sign that says, thanks, Vetix. Gotcha. Um, we're not allowed to contact the people, and they're not supposed to contact us. But Vet Ticks contacts us later on and they tell us um, <clears throat> here's the feedback we got. Okay. And then we post it on our website. And um, it's just a way of us giving back to the military. Um, it's anywhere from people that are retired to people that have got hurt in service. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just it's a good way for any promoter to give back to the veterans who have helped uh, the country. That's awesome. Uh, so it's Vet Ticks. Um, you can donate one ticket, or you can donate a hundred or a thousand. It's up to you. Um, but again, it, it's a it's a really good service, and um, we also offer discounts to the military that show up in person, and to first responders. I'll say, do say, hey, a military mm-hmm. flash an ID. They're in for half the price. That's awesome. Um, with our first responder, police officer, a paramedic. Mm-hmm. Uh, last time we just let the paramedics just walk right in. Yeah. Yeah. There. It's always they, good to have yeah. paramedics around. A bunch well, of and, but, but again, you just never know. You know what I mean? It's a bunch uh, of college yeah. book guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes, healthy, healthy. We're, 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 we're well fed. Um, but but Ventix is a very good organization. Um, they do a lot with a lot of people. I did already. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so if anybody's a promoter, um, or if you're doing anything in the future and, and it, it's you've got tickets to an event or something or you know of a, a big corporation that wants to help somebody, um, we highly recommend that you, you jump in with that ticks. Uh, again, like I said, we've been doing it for four years. It's awesome. It's a good um, thing to be doing, it seems like. We, we did it in April. Um, we did separate ones for each day. Uh, we did it for the Jacksonville show, and we're doing it again for November. That's awesome. Um, so, yeah, it's just our way of giving back. Okay, we're, we're not down there yet. Okay, Big J says keeping it real time when we're talking about the convention. Yep. Um, you guys were taking turns on the bed. 
Yes. Well, he had it more than I did. But yes. <laughs> um, Brenda says, absolutely not. Steve and Trish, we love you guys too. See, I told you. You, you know, I was just messing with you anyways. Trina says, and currently serving members. You. That doesn't sound right, Trina. You're, you're, yeah. you're currently serving some members. It's, it's serving, serving military. <laughs> oh, only military. Oh, okay. no, I feel sorry for you, man. <laughs> members of the military. And David says, "Well, because you guys are talking about." Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm working on my uh, reverse hourglass, man. <laughs> yes, Vic, that, that takes also does for military as well. Cool. But like I said, if you're you know anything in the military and you can sign up for this it, it's a really good cost that's cool. um so again it's just our way of giving back so um Trina's laughing about serving members <laughs> yeah <no. laughs> again we're supposed to be adults here that's why we're talking about yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're past the kid hours so okay we're good, we're good. all right we never said it was very <laughs> cheesy uh, that's some funny stuff but yeah, no, we're 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 glad to have whoever shows up at the show. I mean, we're we're just it'll be good. And, and you guys, like I said, if, you, if you're collectors, even if you're not comic collectors, if you're toy collectors, oh my god, the stuff I walk out of from from your shows, from all my toys, you know, I, I I'm bad. I people judge the show by how much stuff I walk out with. Yeah, I, I've had people. Well, hey, go, we've had some good shows then. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've actually had a couple promoters. I don't see anything in your hands. Yeah, I feel yeah. bad for those guys when we're broke. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's usually when I don't have anything yeah. in my hands is I'm broke. It's, it's not that I don't want it. I found some of my old school Transformers, G1 Transformers, still in box. Very good. Nice. That show a couple years back. I was, a, I loved it. Like this is crazy. I was like losing my mind. You know, they, they told me it's a good, good show with toys and comics. Um, if you're looking for a more vintage one, there's no the land in January. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I'm looking so, forward to the land. Absolutely. You and Monica, hopefully, you'll be busy sitting at the table. Sure you guys will be guest stars there. Thank you very much. Sir. Uh, but that. there, there's some vintage good toys there. Yeah, there is. I can back that up from previous yep. years. Absolutely, the land has been one of those shows. It's 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 that small, unique show, <laughs> just like I would say Daytona. It's been going a little longer. Am I right or am I wrong? Um, Daytona versus the land versus Daytona. Daytona has been around longer. Okay. The okay. lands, the lands on ten Still years. Still kind of an infant. Yeah. In that comparison. Once, a, once a year. Gotcha. Um, but and, and see, to me, the land is more collectible than comics. Yes. 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 Where where Daytona is more comic yeah. than collectible. This is a vintage collectible yeah. show. This is. I mean, even Cutter goes there and finds stuff that. You like yeah. the land. Well, well, there's there's anywhere from from video games mm -hmm. and toys to first generation, you know, Transformers, yeah. like you yeah. said, um, Star Wars, because Eric's going to be there. Trina, <laughs> Trina, <laughs> Trina bought the original Light Bright at one of the shows. She did. Oh, Light Bright. Yeah, oh my she still goodness. has that. That's the house. I love Light Bright. Did it come with the papers still, or did you have to find new papers? I used to play with Light Bright. Yeah, I don't know if it had the papers or not. I know she had it, she had it out, and she messed around with it, and then we put it in the closet, but she still <laughs> has it. I haven't sold it. So, so we give Eric some love since we're picking on him. Yeah, no, Eric, Eric's all right. He's a good Star Wars guy. Twice Upon a Twice has a lot more better Star Wars stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Twice, Upon, Twice Upon a Twice is like the bomb. You say it's Twice Upon a Better. <laughs> came with. Oh, she said it came with the paper. Okay, very cool. And twice upon a toy has like a better pop selection too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they, <laughs> they, have, they they actually have a new store. Yep, they they have do. a new store, and I went over there and checked it out. And you need to ask Eric why he hasn't been there, because I've been there and Daryl Gunther has been there, but Eric has not been there yet. I haven't been there yet. And no. It's all because it's out in the middle of the sticks too. That's okay. It's still cool. <laughs> Where's the location at? Um, Inverness, Inverness River area. Yeah, I used yeah. to live in that area. Yeah. yeah. So they, they have a nice little store. It's there. nice to have a store over there because for a long time, um, growing up, I grew up in Ocala and I also lived in Dunellen as a young adult for a little while. And Seventh Day Stretch was where I went to in Dunellen for a yeah, while. They, they, they closed, closed down years, down years, ago, years yeah. ago, so there really hasn't been anything to fill that void. Right. right? Somebody told me that some somebody has recently opened up. Oh, really? In the area of my oh, Seventh okay. Inning. Okay. But I have not been over yet. Yeah. The store. <laughs> okay, Trina says she has a picture of me and Kathy 
wine coop, playing with it. Yeah, because when she bought it, her and Kathy were freaking out over it and playing with it yeah. at the show. I, I would like to know how I was not included in that, Trina. Thank you very much. Look, well, kids. I'm not going to like that. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not Wonder Woman, they don't think you're interested. Shut up. Yeah, I wonder. I, well, Kathy's Wonder Woman, too. Exactly. So, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> Big J says we're calling out Eric, and we are. Yeah, Eric's a good guy, though. Eric's got a strong heart and a tough skin. He can take it. I think he lost him or he fell asleep. Yeah, he probably, <laughs> he probably jumped off. Probably Kate, Kate, Katie's probably it. talking to him. Very cool. Okay, so uh, then we got hey, Ryan. Hey, Ryan. How's it going? We got Ryan from Smash Comics. How's it going, man? It's good to see you, brother. We'll be talking to you soon, I'm sure. Are you seeing him? Yeah, well, I'll be seeing him soon. Nice to Colin see you Raymond. online. But <laughs> yeah, no. So we'll correct it then. We'll correct it then. Like Ryan now. Yeah. No, I know Ryan. Hey, Ryan. How are you, man? <laughs> yeah, when I go near, it's either Ryan or yeah. Brian I got to talk to. So. Yep. Now we tag Smash, and I'm old, old tired, tired of dying. dying. <laughs> uh, you're not that old. He's you're not dying so yet. He's been holding down the shop this week. I'm sure. I'm sure. They have an event coming up too, November 10th. Uh -huh. Smash Con is happening. Yep. So next 10 years. 10 year ten anniversary years, of Smash yeah. Comics. It's going to be awesome. George Perez is going to be out there, I believe. A few other oh, guest artists cool. as well. Nathan Zerdy, uh, and myself are going to be out there too. A bunch of artists. Uh, food trucks as well. Should be very nice. fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, very nice. Uh, and then he, what he didn't mention is we're going to be out there holding the raffle table again. Yes, yes, they are. Yes, third, they third are. year, and this year it goes to. Kids' house. It's not toys for tots. It's kids' yes. house. Kids house yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good thing too. They're yep. switching it up there. They're switching it up, going more local, mm -hmm. making sure it gets there. Yeah, yeah. Um, <coughs> speaking of the raffle table, Tom's already donated a lot for it. Excellent. Um, Graven's donated. We've had yep. a couple other people donate. Yep. E even Carrie Beans, oh, Frylock really? donated oh, yeah. for it. Oh, nice. So we're getting it. So anybody who's out there wants to donate, get hold of us because. All proceeds, of course, goes to Kids House Sanford. Mm -hmm. um, we, after the whole raffle is done, mm -hmm. uh, we present it live. Like that's always. awesome. Well, there's a lot of shows going on that weekend too, yes, right? That's the Tallahassee. The Tallahassee, show. Tallahassee. Yep. So um, I'll, I'll miss out on uh, Smash Con. Free, free, free play, play Florida. Yeah, yeah. Free play Florida going Friday to Sunday. Monica will be out there as well as me periodically throughout Friday and Sunday. And we're hoping to be able to get out there at least Sunday. This Friday we work our real jobs and they don't let us have Ranger time stop. off. Ranger stop is happening too. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Ranger stop is that weekend also. So yeah, I have um, to think about the dates. When yeah, it's hard to... because it's you, you you gradually know about all the shows, but they some converge so much. And then there's also quarter throwdown on that same Saturday. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. There is. Yeah. It's so there. Yeah, I thought they were every. They are, but they throw in a Saturday now and then, and I yelled at her this time. Oh, <laughs> oh, man. She put it in on a Saturday. Yeah, because she's at a certain yeah. night of the week, and yeah. that's it. Yeah. Okay, let's see. <coughs> Big J says, get Tom another beer. Yeah, Tom doesn't have one of his firm, so. Yeah. Well, uh, the, beer, the beer runner has stopped. I'm sorry, I'm tagging. Oh, <laughs> beer runner. <laughs> well, free play. He's calling you Jew now. Thank you, Trish, your sweetheart. <laughs> you better say that. <laughs> well, well, there's still a Kamikaze shot he needs to do, too. Oh, yeah, that's he's right. got it. I'm ready. I'm, I'm up for it. Well, let's see. Oh, yeah, that's right. John likes to go to free play. He loves that one. Yeah, we've never been before. It's our first year as artists being there. Oh, so really I'm excited cool. to yeah. see it and be part of it. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Where, where's the, the Kamikaze shots? Getting them. You gotta have one too. I know. Kamikaze shots. Right. But yeah, free play Florida. We're hoping to be able to get in there. Brandon has asked us to apply for it, so okay. we apply. So hopefully, like I said, on that Sunday. Yeah. Friday. I mean, Friday, 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 Friday shows kill us because we have the real job. Yeah, yeah. You, know? you gotta it's do the work. Who gets the shots? He gets the shots. Sweet. All right. Uh, Graven wants a shot. Are you sure? I know you like them. Well, she has. Oh, a shot. I'm taking one. Oh, okay, cool. I'll All take right. the other buttery nipple. All right. All right. Because <laughs> I like that. This thing. never had a vodka kamikaze. Let's see how that goes. I love these. These are my shot of choice. It's gonna, it's gonna be a little weird going down, but yeah. 
Hits you good? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think, think a little bit of like that lemon, mm -hmm. lemon paste into it. All right. Well, yeah. Trish, thank you for having me over to the our, house. Our show moderator. Cheers. Cheers, Neil. Yeah. Cheers, Cheers, everybody. That's good. That's good. We're good. Yeah. See, well, this is, uh, speaking of quarter throwdown, yes, we yeah. do. But John says, play some arcades <coughs> and pins with Journey and Kiss in my take deck. Absolutely, John. I'm already <laughs> there with deck. you, buddy. <laughs> and, and Big J, more buttery nipples. Yes, I had to have two so they match. We gotta keep it, Big J. No buttery. This one's uh, kamikaze. Yeah. yeah, those two had kamikazes because those only come three to a pack. So. Yeah, that's what she said. It's very good. All right. Buttery nipples. Jay, are you trying to offer your buttery nipples? We don't like that. Melissa. Cheers, Melissa. Cheers, Cheers Melissa. How are you? She wants to actually be on the show. She does. Yeah, we'll have to get her out there. Melissa is part of Quarter Throwdown. She's the mastermind behind it all. She's very the cool. one that makes it all happen. That's very cool. We're proud to be a part of her show. I'm not because I spend money and I don't win anything. <laughs> no, that's good, though. You need to be there. Support. He, you said nipples. <laughs> nipples. Well, yeah. No, we're there. We support. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. I'm a full service butler. <laughs> you, you're, you're the best quarterback we know. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> yeah, we've we've uh, we've not won anything there either. I gotta try some. America wants to try them too. <laughs> the 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 butter nipple. <laughs> I'm going to go back and get me some more. Delicious butter. <laughs> <laughs> when I don't have to share with anybody. I think you just wanted to get them oh, so you can play any window good. games all night long. <laughs> oh, no. Look, I, I almost got the ones that said porn stars. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Porn stars. That way you can have a porn star. No, I wouldn't be on the show. I, I, I got to I gotta be a, I gotta, Sorry, Trina. I got to go over to Steve and Trish and uh, uh, having a porn star for uh, me. Uh, <laughs> Tom doesn't need you to get him in trouble, okay? I get him. Enough trouble. Uh, everything. No, she doesn't. <laughs> Last couple of times we ain't won nothing. Well, remember Kelsey was our bad luck this last year. Yeah, night. Kelsey's bad luck. Is that what you guys say? She's the bad luck? Well, she was grumpy when talk with anybody. Oh, yeah, that's true. The horror <laughs> was hard. We gotta be happy. You gotta yeah. be happy. If you're not happy, you're not gonna get anywhere. But she told me she was, oh, I was happy. I'm like, if you're not gonna bid, you're not gonna talk to anybody, why didn't you even come? True. And she's like, because I had fun. <laughs> well, grumpy I mean, cat. Is mean, she grumpy cat? Yeah, she was grumpy Xander cat. has his moments like that too. So yeah, but Xander yeah. just doesn't pay attention. That's to anything. true. <laughs> it's true. You heard it here, folks. Xander does not pay attention. Don't worry, to Xander. We're gonna talk about throw, you whether you're in the room or not. Just to throw everybody in the bus, Cutter just don't care. <laughs> Cutter's <laughs> completely out of the mix. He's like, huh? What? Video games. Yeah, yeah, Melissa, if you start getting um, League of Legends there, Cutter might come. Yeah. Yeah. Was he a gaming guy? Yeah, he's yeah. a gaming guy. That's why when you see us go to the gaming competitions, it's yeah. he it got us pretty into good. it. Yeah. yeah, good for him. So Here's yeah, cool. and I love CEO when oh yeah because mm -hmm. he got us into wanting to go to CEO and I just love the atmosphere there. Stinky, but I love the atmosphere. Yeah, <laughs> there's quite a few people there to do the shower. <laughs> and, and Cutter was telling us there's some of the players that will throw deodorant at the crowd. And really? Crowd. Yeah, they, they will start passing out deodorant to the crowd. These, these people like don't take showers for like days on end. Yeah, they're stuck to a screen. Wow. Video games. Yeah, yeah I, I think, think I'm just more, gonna, I but, think I'll just keep comics and toys. But that happens at comics and toys too as well. Not yeah, as bad, but it has their moments. I, 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 I had the guy who brings the the whole cart full of books and walks by you and oh my god, I just watched Tom's collection. This guy crumple. Now see, I could, I could, <laughs> I could see that happening more. And Tom's not saying any of this, and Tom's not agreeing to any of this. That, that's Just... part of vision, isn't it, Monica? <laughs> oh my! I, I don't know nothing. I just run the show. It's not from Pop Culture Playground. It's not endorsed yes. or condoned in this conversation. No, it's not at all. Pop Culture loves you no matter what. <laughs> 
Honest. And, 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 and the farther you stand away from him, the happier he is. <laughs> okay, put it this way. The money's green no matter where it comes from. Nope. I'm just happy to have customers that enjoy their books. It's true. Very true. Very true. <laughs> Not like you trap me. It's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> I watch Star Wars. Eric, that was from Star Wars, buddy. <laughs> but who said it? Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> but he had like a fish face thing. Get him another beer. Okay, so on that note, we got Melissa. I need to make it out to Daytona Beach Comic Book Convention. I hear great things about it. Melissa, if you want to show up on 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 on, <laughs> on November fourth, on, on I'll get distracted over there. <laughs> Trish has a free pass for you, by the way, so she'll take care of you. Yeah, you're all good. So you're all good, and, and you, we'll be happy to have you come there and check out things. Yeah, for sure. And maybe we can do something to help you work out um, your corner yeah. throwdown and give you some gifts to give away out there. Right. Well, I, I think at one of your shows you need a candle person. There's a good possibility. Maybe maybe not this Daytona show, but the, the two-day Daytona show. Why, is, that, is, that, is that what she does? She yes, actually is amazing. Oh, let, let me oh, show you. Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> she makes, okay. They look oh, real, so, like you want to eat them. So, like you want to eat them? Yeah. And and she's I'm not that drunk, drunk yet. But she's no, got to buy it into them. That's her candles. Oh, very cool. These are these are two of them. Yeah. They look like you want to take a bite out of them. This is, this is one of her candles. Well, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. And my favorite, which I still haven't, I haven't done it yet. Yes. Yeah, <coughs> you gotta smell it. Oh man, is that blue? You know, it's like Fruit Loops. Wow, very cool. Cool. So this is what she does. Okay. Look, look, Melissa, I'm hooking you up here. This is what she does. She and she usually sells out of everything. Oh, there's another one. Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. Did I get another one? Yeah. 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 That's very cool. <laughs> She has butter beers as well. Yeah, well, and, well, now that we've shown all that, if my wife's on here, she's going to be like, she needs to be there. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, if she's the one that likes to smell everything. And, oh, oh, yeah. They're amazing. And she, they, if it's got a good smell to it, she'll let me know. <laughs> Apple? Uh, yeah. Apple Apple's in there. Oh, yeah. Insanity. Oh, yeah. No, she is some sorcery good. making those candles. <laughs> telling you. <laughs> You know, she even she makes like even themed ones. Like she has supernatural. One of them smelled exactly like the inside of the Impala. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's go down. But speaking of which, we will have the Impala at the show again. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, Jonathan Ortiz laughing. J Big J. Tom is getting tipsy. No, not yet, John. I got a ways to go. And <laughs> Melissa's too many buttery nipples. Ha ha ha. That would be amazing. <laughs> I'm trying to work in your favor here, Melissa. <laughs> Melissa's screaming at us tonight. Too many buttery nipples. It's in all caps. <laughs> so, you know, I, I don't, I don't wish bad stuff on you, but I think she would make a great yeah. addition to one yeah, of no, your shows. Yeah, no, no, no. That would it would be interesting to have somebody in there with candles because we don't have anyone that does that. So mm -hmm. yeah. Um. So please, Melissa, if you if you get a chance, come come November fourth, walk around, check out the show, and if you think it's something you want to try, be happy to talk to you about doing it in April. Uh, you guys are too kind. Big J's one day we have to drink together then. He just wants to get more buttery nipples. He wants more buttery nipples. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's, she. as you see, she does amazing work. I mean, I, I, I love candles. I've always been a candle lover. Hers, I don't even want to burn. He has a candle I mean, fetish? I do. Yes, he does. Yeah, but they're yeah, I do. I, I am... One of those. Uh, There's candles all over the house. If yep. you If you look. No, my wife loves candles. Yeah. Yeah, and and that's her thing though is smell them and see what that the scents yeah. are and stuff. No, I enjoy candles and, a lot. And, and you know, and and it's someone that goes out there and she's out in the garden and she messes around with plants. Right. So it's it's you know she likes stuff that smells certain ways. So those candles that that you showed me. Yeah. And she can make be, custom ones would, too. Would be a awesome. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's, that's really cool. <laughs> Yeah, my coworker buys from her all the time. Makes me go pick him up, but buys from yeah, her all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh. And, but some of the titles are not kid friendly. <laughs> no, that's true. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Candles. Yeah. Well, someone's important. Phone's blowing up over there. That's every time somebody's <laughs> commenting or tagging. Okay. So this weekend, what do we got going on this weekend? Spooky Empire this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Halloween um, Comic Fest is at every local comic book store. Yep. So, each, and each store is doing something different. <laughs> Some of them um, give away candies, have the um, costume contests. I know. I don't know what Living Dead. Living Dead is giving away free comics. Yeah, a few shops. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Comics, they, they all comics and toys, um, yes. candies. Um, I know that um, Comic Central. Is actually giving away some of the free passes for Daytona Beach. Okay. Um, so all you have to do is go in, sign up. You don't have to be there to pull your name, and then we'll send some free passes. And I believe they're also giving away a couple of the golden tickets. Cool. Oh, see, so, there, there, there you go. Um, yeah. So Comic Central in Sanford is doing that. Um, I know a couple other stores are also using our flyers. Or, I mean, our passes for for something to give away. I think the golden ticket thing is an amazing idea. It's just, it's, just, it's, 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 as long as they don't lose it, I mean, it, it's it's for shows because Daryl called me up and said, look, I know it's too late, you've already printed the thing, but if they bring the pass, we'll let them in the town Yeah. It's a bit of a drive, but you never know. Maybe somebody wants to drive out there. You never know. Maybe somebody's coming from out there to have a date on the show. Yeah. 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 So, and, 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 and that's the other thing that we're a little worried about too, though, is that we know we have people that come from up around that area, mm -hmm. from Panama and from Mexico. That's devastated. That, that's devastated, and we know that they they may not be able to make it to the yeah, show. That's unfortunate. I mean, that's and, and they've got their homes to take care of. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's going to affect a lot of things. It's going to affect a little bit of Daytona. It's going to affect Tallahassee a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that's that's what happened to them up there. It is bad. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, if you think about it, even we weren't affected as badly after Irma, but it still affected no, no, a lot I mean, of people. And, and Irma was the first time I actually went and took tarps in my house and covered up the boxes. Yeah. I mean, I'm up in the one room that you can barely get up there. The cats can't even get up in there. And I tried to tarp the whole thing in there because I was so worried. First time I've ever covered up the windows. Yeah. And I've been in Florida since 99. Yeah. We had hurricanes that came right across, and I didn't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just sitting there with the cat. We're, we're sitting there, and you hear the storm coming over, and all of a sudden, you hear this thing hit the roof, like, boom, boom. And I look up, and I'm like, the cat's gone, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm just sitting there wondering what happened. And five minutes later, the power's out. And we're about power for 10 days. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I mean, and, and you know, and that's just power. Well, we still had our house. We still had everything. We still could drive yeah. around. We still had gas. These people have nothing. Their homes are gone. Yeah. Everything is destroyed. Mm -hmm. They have no power. I mean, power is getting back on. Well, yeah, and you deal with all the other aftermaths that's involved with that is health and people that oh, are yeah. sick and people that yeah. need help and assistance and don't get it. You know, people do pass. People say, well, some people, well, people don't really always die in, in hurricanes, people say, but you, they do. It just they, takes they, a little longer. It, yeah, and, and, and that's the thing. You're, you know, look at Puerto it, Rico. Yes. You know, look at what well, happened with them. Well, that's a that's an island that got yeah. devastated. Yeah, exactly. There's nothing you can do to help. No, them. no. Everything has to be shipped in. Exactly, exactly. So we're just hoping that everybody that's up there that that's able to do can take care of themselves. For sure. You know, and that the people that are going to help them, I mean, they're they're the real superheroes. I agree. I agree. It, it's not nice. just the the guys that we read about in comics, but it's it's guys like that that are out there. It's restaurants. It's 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 um, convenience stores that open up their doors yeah. and just say. Hey, here's some stuff. They're silent heroes. Yeah, let they're us really help are, you yeah. and, and, and do what we can. Um, and there's a lot of people that are collecting stuff and they're driving up there and they're dropping it off. Mm -hmm. um, our reservists are up there and they're trying to help. Um, a lot of times the government gets in the way, though. Yeah. There's a lot of red tape. Yeah, there and there's a lot of people that need help. So um, we just hope that everybody up there gets together. So uh, Yeah, couldn't say it better yeah. myself. No, that's, you know, again, uh, it's we, we're just, you know, we want to have fun at the shows. But at the same time, we, we think about all the other things that are going on. Yeah, I think sometimes people think that yeah. because there's so many shows going on and because you maybe a promoter or like we, our artist or what, you know people are doing promotion that's going around, that we might forget those things are happening. But we don't. They're yeah, always you, you, on our it, mind. It's always on your mind, and it's always, what can I do to help? Or, right. or you know, is there something I can do? Because you don't want to keep, keep giving money because you don't know where that money is going to go. Correct. Correct. Money doesn't always go 100% to where you're sending it. 
because there's somebody somewhere that's taking that money. Yeah, some middleman. But if you can turn around and you can get some kind of product, toilet paper, mm -hmm. um, towels out of your house, food, can just don't throw them at them because then they yeah. complain if you throw them at them. <laughs> But you know you gotta you gotta do something to help, and and, and those that can help, I think it's great. I agree too. You know, so uh, so that's my soapbox. I'm also oh, for now. No, you're <laughs> good. Um, do you get more brain No, you're not, man. I think it needs to be said, and that's important to be said. I think we've got too much going on in the world right now that people get tons of little small important things get lost. Yeah, it's nope. important to talk about. Oh, that's not a small important thing. That's a large important. It thing. is, but yeah. people look at it as a small thing sometimes rather than being as important as it needs to be. Yeah, I mean. I really don't care if my president is going somewhere to play golf. Yeah. His ass should be somewhere helping people. I agree. You know, if whether you agree with the governor or whatever, he's at least out there doing something. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and again, I don't like talking politics. I don't like talking religion mm -hmm. because it's just, it's too hard. Of course. Yeah, and so, we don't talk about that on this show anyway. We don't. So let's get back to comics mm -hmm. and fun. <laughs> Okay, America <laughs> wants to know if the potato food truck is going to be there at your show. No. Uh, we're going to have three new food trucks. So we're having uh, food trucks. No, you said fruit. No, food trucks. <laughs> you said fruit. We'll play the videos like this. <laughs> okay, guys, did, did you say fruit or food? I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> Um, we're gonna have. He lost it, so you had to. No, I, I lost it because she's asking about the potato truck <laughs> and everything I've always heard about this potato truck. Yeah. Okay. No, um, see, now I've, I've lost two of them happening here. Three, three uh, food trucks coming. F food or fruit? Fruit. fruit. <laughs> three food trucks. Um, and an Impala from fit, Supernatural. Feeling good. Feeling good food truck. Okay. Um, which is. Uh, Nick from Pop Tandem, that's his mom and dad's truck. Okay. Um, so they have hamburgers, hot dogs, stuff like that. Very recently priced. Good food on that truck. Um, I want to say it's Kono and Ono, but I'm not sure. Okay. Um, but they're a Hawaiian cu cuisine food truck. Yeah, okay. I've seen them at a lot of shows. Um, so they will be there. And then um, Self's, uh, Self's Vapor Room is a, um, a smoke shop that's in Ormond Beach area, but they also have a food truck that does food. Okay. No, no vape or nothing like that. Food. <laughs> <laughs> so they will be there. And, and from my understanding, they're supposed to be bringing uh, pizza from um, Gotham City Pizza as well. Excellent. This is my understanding. So, okay. so th three food truck, food trucks. People <laughs> 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 said me saying that. Um, and then what we're gonna see about if the one lady wants to come back and do the ice. Okay. So um, Jonathan says she is America is upset. She wants a potato truck there and make America happy again. <laughs> <laughs> Watch what you ask for, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> I like potatoes and make America great again. <laughs> um, you know he uses that pun too much. You know he uh, does. Yeah, you in know. private. To make America great and to make America happen, um, I'm gonna have, see they somebody else can't bring potatoes with them. Yes, um, <laughs> I'll bring a potato. Here you go. <laughs> I feel for her. I wanted potatoes and well, I never got a potato. Me and my old friend they had run out of food though, and Trina got mad. Yeah. <laughs> okay. When you run out of food at 1:32 o'clock. No, I get to. Or you know. call me up and say, "Look, it's supposed to rain tomorrow." I don't care if it's supposed to rain. You're a food truck. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to make money? Lock it up. Maybe it leaks. Maybe a food truck <laughs> leaks. I want to make America happy. Um, <laughs> we will see who has potatoes, and we'll make sure <clears throat> that Steve brings at least one potato for America. Yeah, I can always I can always start up my own food truck and bring out my tits and taters cart. Okay, Ryan right. wants to know who'd win in a fight between a silverback gorilla and a Kodiak grizzly. Silverbacks had a rough day. Kodiak's pretty relaxed. <laughs> I love <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> Who's been drinking? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell does that have to do with anything we're talking about? That is exactly right. However, <laughs> really is making me think now. <laughs> I would say the silverback. No, I'm going to say the Kodiak's yep. pretty relaxed, man. He's ready to get up and like. Smack the hell out of the rest of the day means that he's 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 beat up and worn out. I got yeah. you. Okay, okay. 
Kodiak's yeah. pretty relaxed. Well, it depends. Are you talking about the Kodiak from the old new gen comic book? <laughs> oh, God. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so what else is going on this weekend? Is it LumiCon going on this weekend? Or it is. LumiCon. Lumi. Uh, LumiCon. This show called Freak Show Horror Film Fest. I don't, yeah, I heard about that show. I'm not even trying to say that right now. <laughs> no. well, well, let's go over that one more time. Yeah. <laughs> for anyone that may have missed it. And for anybody who may have missed it, we have the Freak Show Horror Film Festival happening this weekend at Epic Theaters at Lee Vista, located here in Orlando, Florida, just nearby the International Airport. Um, and of course, it is a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday show. We do have tickets online. You can reach us at www.freakshowfilmfest.com. Dot com. We have weekend passes, we have day passes, and we also have single block where you can see one feature. We offer shorts, super shorts, student films, as well as features. So come on out. Unrated, uncut, pure horror, all international independent horror films. Come on out and make a, a weekend of it. It's a great show. And if you come out and meet us at the red carpet, me and Trish, um, there will be a golden ticket in your future yes. for all of Tom's shows yeah. and the Tallahassee show. Yeah. Yes. So come on out if you can, and uh, hope to see you all out there. Yeah. Anything you'd like to say about your shows before we go? Um, just see you all on November fourth, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Um, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And then Tallahassee's the week after, and then January thirteenth is the Land Collectible Show. Uh, so we just want to see everybody out there, and Daytona Beach Comic Convention, please. There you go. All right. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Tom, for coming on the show tonight. No, no, hey. I appreciate y'all having me. All right. So, this has been Drinking with Steve, mm -hmm. Sipping with Graven, and, <laughs> and Drinking Beer with <laughs> Tom. So, thanks, thanks everybody. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. A couple buttery nipples. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. All right. We'll see you on the next one. We don't know when because our schedule's been. We'll right here a couple of But we'll, we'll, we'll let you guys know yeah. and we will get back with you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you guys. Appreciate y'all having me out here. Big J says he'll be there, Tom, me, and the whole gang. Cool. So how, then, how many okay. potatoes do I got to bring? Just <laughs> one for America or just one, one for America. Make it make America happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, y'all. Have a good night. Have a good one, guys. Be welcome. See you later. Thanks.